Wrestling yep. has more than one royal family. What's going on, everybody? It's fucking Thursday night. You know what that means. It's wrestling with knuckleheads. And we got respect the craft, Ray, on the scene. What's going on, Ray? <laughs> Not much, man. What's up? What's up? Chilling, I feel like bro. by now, with the amount I'm on this on the channel, that's it. Pro's gonna need to add my picture there. Right? Like, we're gonna have to update the intro. <laughs> <laughs> just have you laughing at the end. <laughs> like, that's just me. It's just me. Yo. <laughs> Damn, not even 10 seconds Yo. into this motherfucker. And and fucking Taquan over here. I want Ray to tie a belt Jeez. to tie a belt around his neck when he masturbates so he can suffocate it. Yo, what's he David Carradine? <laughs> Jeez. What the fuck, bro? Like, yo, Taquan, if that's your king, bro, like, uh, uh, damn, bro. Oh. I tried it. It's hard. I got a thick neck. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. But, but we back. We back. That's right. Yo, shit. We're going to have the quintessential wrestling conversation that everybody has on their couch just talking shit. We're going to talk about everything that we can get our hands on. Because, yo, not for nothing, on Friday we started the conversation, but that's pretty much what we do here. We shoot the shit yeah. about wrestling. And, you know, we, we do, we can get to uh, do the fight thing. It's coming around, you know, January 17th. In, yeah, uh, less, than, less than two weeks away. Yep, Might yep. Be there. Shit. Yep, we can get into that, because I know we go into that. Yeah, and, it's going to be fun. It's going to be yo, fun. That just, card is... Oof. Yeah, for real. We we get into the state of Denmark when it comes to AEW. All right, Kenny's gonna be here oh, soon. Hey, there we go. Yeah, you know, we 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 get into everything and anything, bro. What's going on, Ray? Taquan's gonna sit here and he's gonna acknowledge you, Ray. Taquan's about to just start unsubscribing. About to try to report my my channels. He's just gonna get Third. into it, like yeah, Taquan. <laughs> acknowledge me. Yeah, you know saying shit. <laughs> we the ones I am. <laughs> oh shit! But nah, man, not much. It's 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 good to be here. We talking uh-huh. wrestling. We talking. We talking the craft. Something that I love to talk about. Yep. <laughs> Knowledge is the game. Damn, son. Like, oh, can't take it, you nowhere. Besides, Taquan, one day you'll finally you'll finally start getting around to, to liking me on the channel. It's all good. It's all good. Word. Yo, oh. so so I know that you don't get asked this question enough. Right. What does the craft mean to you? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know what's funny is you would think with the amount of times I've asked people this question, I would have an answer, and it's fucking hard to think of. Because it, it it it's so much like it's to me the craft, and it's funny because yeah, the podcast is wrestling related. Yeah. To me, the craft it's not even just wrestling; it's whatever you fully commit to. You have that devotion to something you're working to make better, and yeah. that's what the craft is. This this right here is a craft. This is a craft. What we do is a craft. Entertaining is a craft. Wrestling is a craft. Craft to raise... Re- <laughs> Yo, the amount of times I've gotten that as a fucking corny answer, shit. But um, <laughs> it, 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 it's, that's what it is, though. The craft is something we, we're supposed to give importance to. Yes. So wrestling is that. Wrestling is a craft. It's an art form. It's something that we all... We grew up as fans of it. And then just as we've gotten older, we've gotten a bigger interest in it. And it's yeah. something that should be respected. That's why, hey... I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Respect the craft. That's the name of the podcast. No, I hear you. What, you know yo, what? It is. T- technically, it's a quality, it's, you're not wrong. It is an art form because it's entertainment. It has drama. It has some other things. Yeah, it has good acting. Yeah. You know? a, a lot of good acting because yeah. you'll be seeing the, the weird shit they be doing there. Word. <laughs> you know? It has imagination and shit. Yeah. So, and again, it's, it's, it's letting your creativity flow and having that actual interest in it. That's what yeah. embodies what a craft should be. No, nah, for real. When you when you when you think about wrestling, what do you like? If you were to explain wrestling to someone, but not in a literal sense, mm-hmm. in like how you feel about it. So if it's someone that so like someone like the elevator pitch, someone that maybe doesn't know about wrestling. No, no like you're talking to um, let's say like a therapist or someone like I just had his fucking name, Tony Roberts. Okay. You know how if you were to talk about wrestling to inspire someone about how passionate you're feeling about the craft, 
what would what would you say? Like, how would you? To me, it's the it's the perfect form of almost best way to put it is legit a drama. It's the be- it has the perfection of everything. It's the art form that mixes theater. It mixes just f- combat. It mixes a little bit of everything that everyone has an interest in. You'll find it in wrestling. Yeah, it's one of those where you there's it's the best way to explain it is always the the thing everyone says. It's like it's like Baskin Robbins. There's so many flavors of ice cream in it. You'll find one in wrestling that you're gonna like. Yeah, there's always that one thing that catches people. Either it's strong style, be it the death match style, be it just storytelling alone. Like uh, Ray read my comment. Try- no, but that's the answer, bro. If you listen to my podcast, this is usually what we get into. <laughs> We're talking about. He started talking before you put the the fucking comment there, Daquan. Stop with the shit. No, Daquan, <laughs> just go. Everything I say now, that's it, uh, pro. I like mud pit again. That's yeah, the yeah. style, though. I like mud pit is- wrestling. Like there's that's a style of wrestling, and that's something. Yeah. Like it, it's it's one of those where again you ha- you can find something in it. That's why I hate when I see people that just the only thing they do is complain about every side of wrestling. It's like you can't find one thing to like. You, but you know you know what's crazy. That's the best part of wrestling. It's to me it's one hundred percent imagination. Of course, yeah. You know, but it's like. It, it, or let, let's put it this way For my lame ass It's Kung Fu Kung yeah. Fu is a part of everything So is wrestling And when you can let your imagination run wild And take that moment To sit there and actually believe what you're watching And that's why some of the greatest wrestlers Become the greatest wrestlers Because it's easy to believe what you're watching When they're on stage When they're in the ring or on stage Than most but to sit there and, and be there and be like, yo, I fucking hate Baron Corbin's guts. And yeah. he's making you hate his guts for whatever reason. And, and and that's the biggest thing about it is like they've mastered their craft enough that it's like psychologically they got you where they want you. They're going to yeah. either make you fucking hate them, love them, or you're like, damn, I, I want to react. And that's the biggest thing. If a person can make you react, they've done their job. Yeah. Right? I That's. Yo, know, that's I love watching like kids watch it. Yo, that to me is the that I, I feel like when I get to see kids in the crowd and they're enjoying it and they're having that natural reaction, I'm like, I miss that. Yeah. Cause like again, I love I love wrestling and I love seeing fan bases, but a lot of times kids have that natural thing. Now a lot of fans just want to be the smart fan. They're just like, yeah. oh, this is it's like Kids don't, they have none of that in their mind. They're just there to enjoy the show. Fuck this. Yeah, seriously. But, but you, you know, you know what's crazy though? Like when we, we're, we're watching Raw, we critique it. Yep. And, you know, it's very hard to not call out when they botch or mess up yeah. in a big way. It's hard not to mention that. But like when we're watching Raw, we're being the analyst and show is starting to develop his analytical skills with what he sees. Then we go to the indie shows. And shows asked me like, "Yo, why are they doing this?" And I'm turning around and I was like, "Show, this is where you turn your your brain off, and just watch." And he yeah. started watching, and then I'm explaining to him, "I was like, you see what they just did there? It's a it's a it's a dance. It's it's teamwork. Yep. Now, they like they're taking a little bit longer to explain it to each other in the <laughs> ring. That's why it's it's going like that. But and then he starts seeing that, and he's like." Okay, I get it now. And he's able to enjoy it when um when he sees it live from like the indie, you know, the indie circle. Like when we go to Battle Club or Invictus or some shit like that. Because he knows it's like it's a different viewing point because now we're part of the show. And that's the best part about indie wrestling is you get that experience. You're able to actually have that family feel to it. Because it's like everyone's close there. Most of the time you're gonna see about 20 dudes that you've met before. Or you've interacted before. So it's a yes. whole different experience. The thing is, it's so similar with the the, the bigger product, like to, to go with the WWE product. It's so similar. The only thing is we're not as in tune because we're expecting something a lot finer. We're expecting it to be, oh, we're here already. So the dance has to be already mastered. Yeah. But it's still, this is where I give it, where again, I'm not making an excuse for it, but it's one of those where 
they're still that same worker that was doing indie wrestling a few years back. Yep. Like that's, that's the thing I feel like a lot of people forget just because yes, they made it there, but that means because they were able to perfect the WWE style a little bit yeah. better than others, but they're still that same worker. They're trying to better their craft as always, but it's one of those where it, it's hard not to think they're going to have a mess up once in a blue. Oh yeah, like, of course. Uh, and and also the benefit, the, yeah. Fucking Jesus, went man. in on that one. Yo, the ben the benefit for being in like WWE, AEW, or mostly WWE is because you're wrestling the same people thousands of times a year. If you yeah. can't develop, you know, a trust with them and and do go further and further with that person that you're wrestling thousands of times a year, you 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 can't do it. But like in indie, like indies, you from what I see, you're wrestling different people all the time. Yeah, and that's the thing a lot of people don't give credit to. It's one of those where not only a lot of the times you're going to wrestle with different people, a lot of the times you have no time. And I guess I'll break the, the wall here. Um, you have little to no time at times to be able to call a match. Yeah. To be able to say, so what do you do? So what are we going to do here? Like, now let's make it work. A lot of it, that's why when you see independent wrestling, it feels so raw and it feels so just like it's a different vibe to it. Because it's like, again, it's, trying out new dance partners and it's always different. Yeah. But you're still, you know what the goal is, but we're, we're going it in a different way. Yeah, seriously. And yo, and, and that's the, that's the beautiful art about it. Like you watch for me growing up, you, I watched Hogan and the warrior and Macho man. And it was like being them, you yeah. know, like you're a kid and you want to be Hogan. So you want to see him. So it's like watching a movie that never stops. Like you're watching your face movie, your favorite movie that never stops. And the worst part about it yep. is, is when you have the talents that just cut and paste that matches, even though they're working different people. That's true. That And that you feel it so much. And the worst part is a lot of times you end up seeing that on WWE, on AEW. Yeah. Cause you see it. That's like, Oh yeah, let's just work that match. I did like two weeks ago. And it's like, it, yeah. people think, Oh yeah, it's a different match. Is this, it, it's, it kills it because again, that's what creates this stem of like the fans getting bored and they're getting just fed up with it. Yeah, like, uh, it's kind of like, yo, let's just get to these. I want to do these three things and then that's it. Yeah, bro. I Pete's comment is perfect. I hate that because I've seen it. I've seen yeah. people legit. They'll work. They'll do this feud. That's like, yeah, we're gonna work over here. We'll work over here, and it's legit move for move the same match. Like it, it's it's. It's horrible to see because again, it makes you. It's it's trying to. It takes out the psychology from it because now they're like, oh, we're just gonna think fans are stupid, that they're not gonna notice it's the yeah. same match. Yeah. Which maybe sometimes it's a different fan, it's a different crowd, different stuff. But it's like when you see it, especially locally, like, oh, okay, we're at an Invictus show, and then they try to do it at a Battle Club show. It's like people know what you just did a few yeah. weeks ago. Like, it's, just, it's, it's, it's relatively the same crowd. <laughs> it, it, and it's also like now there is IWTV, there's Fight TV, there's a premier wrestling network. There's so many places now that everything's being watched. And that's how you should work it. That's why a lot of times, again, if when you're on TV, you have to work that style. You always have to expect there's a lot more people that are watching a lot of your stuff. So yeah. you can't just try to copy and paste. Because again, it kills it because now it's like, I've seen this before. It's one it's one or two things that you could be like, yeah, let's relive this spot, but not the whole match. That kills yeah. it. And sometimes just tweaking one thing here or there can change a whole match, even though it's the same shit. Like, how many times have we seen Orion Express and the Rockers go at it in the beginning of every pay-per-view? And it was almost like, yo, are we watching SummerSlam again? Or what is this? <laughs> well, but it's see, in that match, you're gonna expect, okay. We're starting this off, drop kick spot, drop kick spot, drop kick spot. But then you're going to get something else. Yeah. Like now this time, Marty Jannetty hurt his knee. Like, you know? th and that works. That's changing certain keys to it that now it's not just copy and paste. It's like, okay, we're going to relive this, but then we're going to the next one. We're doing yeah. something else. Like, hey, yo, what's up, Kenny? Yo. That, that is true, P. It's not like the territories where it's different people in different... It's pretty much the same people going to all these different shows. Now. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. It's like, especially here, you're gonna get a lot of the same fans, especially at these shows that are locally. It's like 
you're going to see the knuckleheads there. You're going to see the dirty heels there. You're going to see people at the same shows that it's like, you got to do something different. You can't just expect, oh, it's a different crowd today. It's like, no, we're yeah. all in the same area. We're going to end up going to a lot of similar shows. Yeah. Like, What's going on, Kenny? You shit. So nope. I, I, the, the question that we're talking about is how... What does the craft mean to you, pretty much? Or what is how does wrestling make you feel and shit like that? And then we we got led up to, uh, you know, how they work the matches and all that. So, what does wrestling mean to you, pretty much, Kenny? He wasn't prepared for this test. No, nah, I know. I no, I'm, I was listening to what you guys were saying. I don't know, like. He froze. Like a joy to see, like depending. Yeah, one, once you said, I don't know, like, you froze, and now you're back. Uh, it's the internet connection here. It's, like, I can see it going orange, like, yellow, and now it'll go back to green eventually. Yeah, you got to warm up. Yeah. It's like a TV dinner. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like, wrestling to me is just, like, a joy just to, like, get away from, like, like your every day. You know what I mean? Like, you want to... Um, turn your brain off and just enjoy whatever is there. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, you know, and people hate on the product all the time, but like WWE for me, is just like watching a soap opera. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's like watching those telenovelas that, you know, like it does it like to you as a kid, it didn't make sense. And you'd be like, come on, really? Like you didn't know that was a twin brother that died in a car crash. And all of a sudden he reappears and like, he really wasn't dead type of thing. Like, that's that's WWE, you know what I mean? And, like, AEW, to me, is, like, those those action films, like Fast and the Furious. It's just, like, you telling me that you just got hit with a pipe and you got kicked 75 times and you still kicked out? Come on, bro. Word. That's like Diesel lifting up a car with one hand. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't <laughs> make sense. But it's enjoyable because in your mind, you're like, holy shit, like, how the fuck did that happen? Yeah. I mean... And like indie events to me is like those bootleg, uh, um, uh, no limit videos. Like you remember, like we used to watch those old like No Limit Soldier movies. <laughs> like, yeah, Shaka uh, was all of a sudden he was like a basketball player, but then all of a sudden he became a cop at the end, and then the drug dealers trying to take him out, and you be like, damn, like yo, how much shit is gonna happen in one show? Like, damn. <laughs> you know what I mean, like, now nah, yeah, I hear. Yeah. It's I a hate perfect you. comparison right there. Like all that was, that was great. But, but yeah, man. But I really believe that Kane was Undertaker's brother. Yeah, and that's that's that was the best thing about it. It was those points where it's like you just had to let your imagination flow. Mm -hmm. You had to yeah. enjoy it at face value, basically. Now as we yeah. get older, now it's like now we're test we're questioning. That's like really like there's certain things that's like. Mm. And again, that's their job is now to make you forget about those little right. inconsistencies. Now it's like, okay, I got to get you invested somewhere else. I got to tell you a better story, yeah. so that way you you forget about this little stupid thing that just happened. Let let other people believe in that, but now focus on this. Yeah, yeah. You, because before it wasn't. Let's try this to see if it works, and if it doesn't, we'll stop it. Yeah, back in the day, Undertaker, you got a brother now. He walked out in a suit a, because he was covered in, in scars. And then eventually we got to the point where it was all in his mind. He could speak. He don't need the machine. He yep. don't need the I am king. You know, he don't need none of that. All of a sudden, he's running for mayor. Yeah. Like, like. <laughs> and even when it was like known that Undertaker and Kane were not actual brothers in real life, they still mention their brothers on the show. Now it's like if you turn around with like Kurt Angle and the Bisser brothers next week, ah, oh, who, who said that? They would never said that. Mm -hmm. They'd cut it out the Hulu fucking replay and shit. Hmm. Uh, see, pros comment, I like, and that's the thing. That's cool too, though. There are a lot of people that can do that. They just want to enjoy wrestling right. for wrestling. But it's one of those where sometimes you want to have the full package though. That's what wrestling is. You want to have Storytelling, you want to have the drama of it, like. <laughs> Yo, I don't know why I feel like Pete 
wrote that as what you lie <laughs> you know like when when he when he's uh definitely, leroy he's screaming when he did yeah, it. when leroy found out some young boy was a machine you lie <laughs> undertaker oh, gained a 1000 percent related hey listen man that's not me saying it. it's them that's but you but you know like yo listen i like matches also because you, you need to be able to watch the match and enjoy it mm-hmm and that but, needs to be there because if you can't have if the the wrestling isn't there, then what's the point? Yeah, like but, it's like the con- like the thing we said a few weeks ago with with uh, with Raw. It's like you want your wrestling with entertainment. Yes, like if you just have entertainment, it's like we're not watching yeah. wrestling anymore. But Which they, is- they, there are natural stories that happen in a in a match that maybe they're not trying to convey, but it just comes out to as like a viewer. Just think about it, like when you when you're watching even MMA. Yep. And you see a like a champion dominating a number one contender, but the number one contender is not like giving up, but he's getting his ass kicked. And he's like, yo, this dude has heart, but he's being outclassed. No. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's a story. Where it's like, yo, this dude, we know that yo, he can't he he's legitimate number one contender, but this guy's just being outclassed, but he got heart, and we can respect him for that. No. That's something that can that can be conveyed in a wrestling match. Right. You know, that's that's like the story when I'm talking about I want a story in my match. That's something I want to see. I want to see where it's like these guys are equally matched. Who's going to make the mistake? This guy outclasses him. You know, how is this? How can this guy out hard, you know, out hard him or outsmart him or some shit like that? Not just like, oh, I'm going to kick you. You're going to go on the rope and I'm going to drop kick you. You're going to fly over the rope, go underneath the rope and then come back and I'm going to super kick you. And then you're going to super kick me and we're going to close on each other. We're going to land on our backs, but not hit the mat and then nip up and then suplex each other at the same time. I was like, that's cool. But what the fuck are y'all doing? See, but you know what's crazy? And I'm going to intertwine that with uh, pros comment. You can still tell a story with that. Because I've seen it done. There's yeah. one clip where it still goes viral to this day and it features a guy that trained me actually, the amazing rep. Yes. There's a clip of him and Loki, the Matrix Minute, where the whole story of the match was Loki is this guy that's been known to hit stiff and he's going to knock you the fuck out in a match. Red has studied him. Red was able to fucking. It was legit like the Matrix was able to fucking move every time Loki was about to strike. So that story's being told there. Now with Pro's comment about Deathmatch, people still want a story with it. Because after a while, you start to be it becomes predictable. Right. Now it's known. Oh, we're gonna see light tubes in this. We're gonna see this same spot where these two guys are gonna sit in the middle of the ring with chairs and just strike. You can tell a story with Deathmatch. There's been companies that have done it. I'll commend one guy that's legit. He's done storytelling of Deathmatch, and that was Ricky Shane Page. This dude has done it, and this is why he also now produces some indie shows because he knows how to tell story in wrestling with even the Deathmatch style. There's a way to do it. Any type of wrestling, you can tell a story. You just have to try. And um, I saw this in uh, uh, Beyond the the Mat where they were talking about the IWF in Japan. Where they had the exploding ring that they tried to redo the moment with with um Eddie Kingston and 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 uh Moxley. But they had that match and it's like you're just watching the highlights and you see them like, yo, they're willing to kill each other. But when the clock started counting down, it was like, wait, this is real. He's really gonna die. Yo, get up, get up. And he couldn't get him, it was like, Yo, I gotta save you. That's little things. That draw you in, like even that was the, the after the match. It's still like, oh shit, yeah. this dude really thinks he's about to die, yeah. and he's gonna risk his life to save him, even though he just tried to kill him. Yeah, you no, know, and that builds something because now you have that emotion there, and that helps continue the story. Now, yeah. what Pro said, Pro, tell me one match that doesn't have a story, because I, t- I can tell you there's something to it. There's no way a match cannot just have something to it. Like, even in this match, they could t- be telling a story, but nine times out of ten, there's something there that they're trying to build toward. Yeah. There and has I th- to be. And I think by story, it's like your own narrative of the match. Because you watch the match, like, you're watching John Cena and and um, Austin Theory at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. The story there that John Cena conveyed was, you're not good enough for me. But the story everybody wanted to see was the passing of the torch. Yep. The thing is, you could look at it either way. You now, it's, it's 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 like I said earlier with the flavor of ice cream. What ice cream flavor do you want here? 
Vikingo versus Kenny. No, oh, that has a story. That has a story because Vikingo is the new guy. Vikingo was that guy that in 2015, 2016, who was Kenny Omega. Not every match needs a story. No, it does. Even no, no, if but, it's not being told, you still need yeah, something there. I think, like, not every match needs a backstory. Like, you know, yeah. where you do, you have two people in the ring and they're like, who, like, why are they wrestling? They just do them together. Okay. But when they're in the match, we got to, I want to, that, that's when you develop that, what draws me in. It's like yeah. magic. If you just pull the rabbit out of a hat, people are going to be like, oh, okay. But if you made a whole show about it no. and you draw their eyes to something else and you did this and bow, smoke comes out, the rabbit's out of the hat and it was like, oh my God. It's like, like Al Snow, I would watch a lot of videos of like veteran wrestlers talking to young guys and trying to tell them how the business was because at one point I wanted to train. Yep. And I'm listening to Al Snow. He's like, yo, everything goes off with that payoff. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's where people get pissed off because they feel like, there's no end to it, but it's like, let it get to a payoff. Let yeah. it, there's some something has to come from this. Yeah, because because yo, the best like Roman Reigns and Jey Uso has to be one of the best stories in a match that we've seen in years. Yeah. And that was the basically who's gonna be the head of the table, the 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 tribal chief of the family, and then Jimmy came in, and Jay showed. He cares more about his brother than this stupid fucking title. You know what I'm saying? And that's when, you know, we saw Roman turn into that Kyle Ren fucking bad guy where he's like, I'm willing to kill anybody yeah. for this shit. And Jimmy was that, yo, I'm not willing to give up my brother for this. You know what I'm saying? That's the story you see. He's Kobe, amazing. you know, he's wrestling um, Brian Danielson in WrestleMania. Like people pop because it's like that first actual black, Af you know, African American champion. But it's also like, yo, this guy throughout the entire months since Royal Rumble and all that had to win matches and earn matches, and now he's finally there. And he's like, can he pull it off? Right. Can he? Can he beat um, Brian Danielson, who's technically the best wrestler they have, and all that? Like, this isn't a give me match. Now, now we got to see that heart that. Kofi was saying at the Elimination Chamber, 11 years, 11, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is where you show it. That's what I want, That that's what I want to feel. Not every match needs it, but the good ones have it. And those are the ones you remember and you still talk about. Because don't get me wrong, there are a lot of matches that are put together and it's like, oh, okay. But then, tell me if you remember the match next week. Yeah. And that's, that's the issue. That's why I say Sometimes it does need that story because it needs to give you a reason to care. Because yeah. if not, it's one of those where you probably can't remember a lot of matches from last year. Mm -hmm. Like we'll have those particular that's like there's a reason yeah. why. You know, you know what's um like a, a example. Ricochet and Will Ospreay, when they first started wrestling, there's a lot of highlights of them. Mm -hmm. But what are the main highlights everyone reacts to? Shawn Michaels super kicking Shelton Benjamin. When he when he did the springboard off the top rope, and Orton, RKO and Evan Bourne when he did the the shooting star press. Yep. Everyone is like, I remember that. They may have seen Ricochet and, and Will Ospreay, but they was like, yo, they're two athletic guys doing some shit. But these two moments, in those that we remember that, even if you never seen the match, yep. you see Shawn Michaels sh super kicking Shelton Benjamin for some reason. Shawn Michaels super kicking Shelton Benjamin. That was like, yo, this is the last draw. This is the, everything I got. Blah! Yep. Perfect timing. Shawn still laid down like, yo, that, that was it. That's all I had. If I don't win this, I lost. Yep. Randy just pop out of nowhere. Like, oh, suck it him in. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm having a, having a hand baby. I mean. Yeah. But again, that's something that gave emotion. It's like, what the fuck did we just see? Yeah. Like, and, and with all the, with all the promos we hear, right? Because like, MJF yesterday cut a promo on Adam Cole And you know there's nothing wrong with his promo But I'm always going to go back to Mark Henry retiring In yep. that Salmon mm -hmm. fucking jacket but, <laughs> but, but not to cut you off But it's exactly what Like you said And then you you know, you know brung up the uh, MJF Adam Cole segment I was, I was hoping you would have hit it It kept going but then you went Mark Henry Was, was like Look! Look what MGF referred to. He didn't. He didn't refer to uh, an AEW 
Adam yeah. Cole promo. He referred to an Adam Cole NXT promo. So, like, that's how far back it was like, shit. Like, your promos are so good that even the stuff that you did in NXT yes. was good. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, when he said that line, I was just like, that's the first thing that came to my mind was Kieran Cross and Adam Cole when they were fighting for the NXT championship. Yep. And again, it tells that now because now it's like, it gives you something to connect this. So it's like, oh shit, okay, this is this is something brewing there. Yeah, There's something like, there. So like now, somebody who say who really doesn't watch NXT like that, right? Because there are people who watch AEW wrestling and have not seen anything of the Black and Gold brand. They have oh. just seen Raw and SmackDown. Yep. Right. And now if you tell them like, oh man, he refers to when he when, when Adam Cole. Was was about to leave, you know, at NXT, and he fought Kieran Cross. Oh, really? All right, let me go back and watch that. You know yeah. I mean, oh, well, why did he say he was Keith Lee's manager? They, they, he just came out to help him. No, 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 no. That was a rumor that went around in WWE before he left to come to AEW. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, and you know, enough for nothing. Like, I really, I love, I love AEW. I love all wrestling in general, right? There's just certain wrestling that I'm like, oh, okay, I can, I could do without yeah. <laughs> half the time. You know what I mean? Uh, I kind of just like pop in here and they're like wild wrestling. Like I'll just pop in here and there. Love what they do, but I just can't watch it every week. Some some segments I just be like, all right, this is no. You know what I mean? But like, I hate the fact that AEW is going on what year four. Right, they're like I believe so. Year four, right? And we're still referring to things from WWE. Like, yes, you hate Tony Khan has like publicly went on to say he does not like WWE, and it, and I know there has to be a reason why, and it, and I know the reason why, right? Because if you listen to all the things that all the reports and you put everything together. Right, you kind of like piece these things together where you wanted to get into the wrestling business. WWE did not want to do business with you. They kind of thought you was more of a fan that had money than anything else. So you tr- you you try like, hey, I hear at some point in time Vince McMahon is gonna sell the company. Me and my dad have oh well, my dad has a whole lot of money, right? And at the time, Vince was probably like, no, nah, I don't want to sell my company right now, but we are we can we can talk later on, you know, down the line. And and maybe, you know, Tony was like the type that would, because he said he would give gifts to other talent in WWE. It's, it's, it's known. You can look this up in case anybody thinks that I'm bullshitting it. Like, you know what I mean? No, yeah, they have images of everything of like yeah, Tony being you know, there when he was younger and all that. And then now he had the opportunity now with the Young Bucks and Kenny and, and Numb, and he took that up. He's like, "Oh shit, let me go and start this." And for I don't know where the signals crossed in, you know, his emotion, but it felt like he was like that jaded. Yeah, fan. you know what it reminds me of, and it's a good character, and then like they kind of changed. You ever seen Ted Lasso? I just started watching this, right? You, Ray, you ever seen Ted Lasso? Yeah, okay. Tony kind of reminds me of Rebecca in Ted Lasso, right? So in Ted Lasso, Rebecca owns the soccer league that her ex-husband used to own. She got it in a divorce, right? And her main idea was, I'm going to hire this guy who knows nothing about the sport to tear it down, Right? Tony is the opposite of that. Tony's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna team up with these guys because you wouldn't let me play ball on your court. So I'm gonna make my own court now. And yeah. the, 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 the the difference between him is, is like, he, like you're the owner of a company. You're telling me that you're like you don't go through these things with people and say, what are you gonna say out there? Because guess what? You're not a streaming service. So you can't be like YouTube right now or us right now. I can just say, yo, you're a piece of shit. Like you have there's rules. Yeah. You know what I mean, 
so you're telling me that at some point you you know um they didn't go over and be like yeah yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna mention vince mcmahon i'm gonna mention you know triple h and wwe and all the other yeah. things you know what i mean like at one yeah. point at, so, at some point in time we have to say like yo enough is enough yo i'll tell you one thing tony khan if you really look at the whole body of work that he did he's kind of like a new age eric bischoff where he's like, what is WWE not doing? We're going to do it. WWE doesn't expand their, their, their people to outside wrestlers, so we're going to open up the forbidden door. But we're going to give we're gonna give all these jobs to these right. people. We're going to, you know, people think, want more wrestling. We're going to do that. But wait, but, but the difference, the difference with him and, and Eric Bischoff is he can't tell a story. Because I would always say the first year of AEW was his best year. And that was when... The Young Bucks and Cody Rhodes and the wrestlers were putting a lot of input into the storytelling because a lot of their matches started to mean something. That title meant something. You know, <clears throat> even when the Young Bucks, when, yo, I would never forget forget this. When the Young Bucks lost to Private Party in that tag team tournament, I was like, this is a fucking place people can grow. Mm -hmm. And now it just turned into, well, when he took over after Cody Rhodes left or Cody lost to, to um, uh, your go go. <laughs> And he started Anthony doing Anthony. all the stories. Right. Yeah. When he started writing all the stories, now all of a sudden, this shit turned into WWE light. Right. No, and, not, and yeah. I was going to say, the thing with it is, the reason why that first year was so great, they were still being the alternative. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Then year two, Tony started to realize, if I want to keep this money going, I have to follow the WWE format. So that's and why that's I hate right. that he has stated so many times about oh I hate WWE and yeah. I hate when the workers say it because yeah. the only way and it's proven and I know people are gonna hate that I'm gonna say this the way to do TV wrestling you have to follow somewhat the WWE format because yep. they've well, perfected it they have perfected yeah. and what, and crazy, the TV right. format it's, and what's it's, crazy about it is yeah. is like like I said right I said right now the one thing that we love see the thing that, that everybody doesn't get right about WWE is that they always go back to them saying like, oh man, I I wish it was like the Attitude Era, right? I wish yeah. it was like the, the old school uh, WWF days when like they had like a million posters, people were coming in with signs, they were doing the, the, the DX chants and they were throwing up the middle finger and talking about fuck you and all those other nonsense and they had the girls half naked and stuff yeah. like that. But guess what? When that era of wrestling happened, WWE wasn't, they were just transitioning into a public traded company. So before that, Vince McMahon was just doing whatever it took to keep this alive. We got Gigi in the building. <laughs> He's red on red we right got, now. Yeah, oh, we got sure, yeah. all red everything yeah. in the and building. Then, <laughs> all red everything, not even and then, you seen, and then you've seen that once they started getting, that once they started becoming traded, nope. and they had to like tone down their stuff because they're like, wait a minute, we keep bouncing around from channel to channel. USA is a is a family owned network. You know what I mean? Like we have to do something to change this in order to stay here. All right, let's and it's just also make some more let's, money. Yeah, let's now just, you're able let's to get dumb investment. this down. And yeah. then once they started to dumb it down, that's when everything else started to fall into place money wise. You know what I mean? Because it's it's all about it's at the end of the day, it's all about money. You know that's, what I mean? Yeah, and that's that's the sad truth of it all. If you're not making money in this, you're doing it wrong, especially with wrestling. It legit is a money business. And that's where, again, with AEW, we love it now that it's like we get to do these deals with Japan and we get to see these guys on the indies still. Mm -hmm. There's going to come a time where Tony Khan now has to say, well, we want to be a monopoly as well. So sorry, indies, you're done. Yeah, but Japan, it's going to be it's going to be a lot lighter than this. Why, see, do, you the think, thing is why do you think he started doing the house shows now? Yeah. Because yeah. he's, trying to, he's trying to get these guys away from going to freaking New Jersey and killing themselves. That's why he told Moxley, he's like, listen, when you sign your new deal, you can't do GCW shows no more. Nope. Yo, but right. the, the, the thing is, like, I understand what y'all saying. They have to have some kind of WWE format, right? But I don't believe that. I, I, I think 
the first year they developed themselves, they, they made a foundation, and now you have to develop your own stick. If you could be WWE Light and no one watches you because WWE has WWE Light and NXT. WCW didn't work as, w, as WWF Light. You could develop your own stick, and everyone loved ECW, and they followed no one's fucking you know, model of wrestling. Right. But how long did they last? But that's because they had no money backing them up. But the thing with AEW but why? is... Why? Why was, but now, why was that? But why was that? Why did WCW have to fold? Because they didn't. Because they did. Well, because WCW they folded because form, of AOL. Because they followed the format that investors were not going to back up. This is true, but I'm talking about in this day and age, where you have AEW and they started off as the alternative. We're not WCW. We're not rebuilding WCW. We're not WWE Light. We're a bunch of guys that were rejected by the big company that are just as good, or if not better. Than them, mm -hmm. and then you showcase them, and you go, you know what? He's right. Whether they are or not, they're showing them in a light where they're better than them. Right. Where people can say the young bucks are better than the Usos because the Usos are looking like fools. Mm -hmm. Where the young bucks are out here having match of the year every every week, and right. they're putting over the ta younger talent to show that even though our younger talent may be mm -hmm. younger, they're still just as good. It's just they have to get get there. But, but when you when you're going and then now you have story after story that lasts mm. two months, right? And it dead stops. We're kind of like, yo, what's mm. going on here? But here's but here's the thing, right? And and like as you're talk as you're like you're talking, right? Like my mind is just like yeah. processing everything, and I'm just like, okay, I. It's like there was a video, and I wish I remember who it was a basketball video. Where like this kid was playing in, he was playing in college. He was playing like he was a college basketball player, right? Like top in his, he was like one of the top guys, right? He was like, oh, I could beat anybody in the in the NBA. He's like, I can play NBA level basketball, right? And he went to go play against somebody in the NBA, and got destroyed. I think it was LeBron. No, it wasn't LeBron. Well, no. I, I remember one guy was talking shit yeah, and no, LeBron no, no, went no, to no. his pickup game and they actually played. No, no, no. That guy proved himself. There's a difference. That guy okay. talked shit to LeBron James for three years. And when LeBron finally got to, to when he finally got to um, play LeBron, he, he, he held his own. Like LeBron didn't score 60 in this game. He yeah. probably, I think he scored his normal 20. But the yeah. guy scored 15. He was close to LeBron. Yeah. He guarded LeBron. He was there. Yeah. But now this kid reminds me of like people like, you know, I can't say indies because indie people, you know, indie talent, they they know like I want to either follow this format or this one. But yeah. you put it, I put it towards people who like who are in AEW, right? It's like AEW to me right now is like the G League of the NBA. WWE is the main NBA stature of professional wrestling, right? Because they know there's certain rules you need to follow in order to advance your career. Not wrestling career. Like, what do you want to do after wrestling? There's so many people. We talk to so many indie talent now, and we ask them, what do you want to do outside of wrestling? And they tell you, what did Janai Kai say the last time we interviewed her? Oh, I want to open up a school and do this, that, and the third. She doesn't yeah, want to sit there all her life and be known as a professional wrestler. She's like, okay, when I'm done doing this, I can do this, right? But in order to do this, I need to elevate myself to a certain point in my career where it's going to help me achieve this, right? Most, some people, some talent now are saying to themselves, you know what? I can be a great actor. How can I achieve this? Take your ass to WWE and let them sit down and do all those classes with you. Take advantage. It's like, it's like a city worker, right? Like me, I work for the city. I take advantage of every free shit they give me before I leave. Because you know what? Because if it suits me, it's like it's there. It's it's it, it's it's right there. WWE is gonna give you that if they see it, if they see a need for it. Oh, you wanna be an actor? All right, let's see. Hold on, but we we gotta make sure at least you cut a promo. 
So we're going to put you in an acting class in Florida to learn how to speak. Hopefully you get it because obviously there's people in WWE now that we look at them and be like, all right, we know we, you're only there for a short period of time because you can't talk for shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it all, I think but, it all depends on what you want to do with your I, life. I, I hear you, but in, in relation, and I'll let you speak after that, right? In relation to your, your, uh, thing about LeBron and that and that kid or whoever was talking shit and the NBA player came and destroyed him. I think the first year of AEW was that guy that played one-on-one with LeBron or played head-to-head with LeBron and kept up with him. Where now they're turning into we're losing ground. You know who you know what it reminds me of? And I, I bad, hope, Ray. I hope no, it, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ray. And then I'll, I'll this will be the last thing I say. You guys, we all grew up from New York. You guys remember Skip to My Lou? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what AEW reminds me of. Skip to My Lou was the best player on uh, uh, that ever hit the rocker and and the end one. Right? Yeah. The minute he got into the NBA, the first year did great. Second year in, he every year after that he folded until he was kicked out into into no one drafted him and put him on a team and he ended up going to China. Yeah. No. no, and I was gonna say that it's it's the perfect way again with that alternative year. That's what made AEW everyone claim to it, everyone loved it because they're like, okay, we're finally getting a different product. AEW realized this isn't gonna always work. Because once that second year came, the interest isn't there anymore. Because now it's like, okay, yeah, it's still it's a little it's a little different, but what what else are you gonna give me? I heard it. I was waiting. <laughs> I'm um, letting y'all motherfuckers okay. talk. I haven't even said anything, and not even a hi. You're nothing. Y'all just, you just been yip, 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 yip. And I'm just here <laughs> looking pretty with my brand new red hair, because who, who the fuck am I, right? Um, just in case, you know, show yeah, one. One time for one time. Later on. Um, Hello. So, um. I just got into this conversation and I think I know what's going on, but I still don't know what's going on. So just I, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit back now because you've taken up all of his talking time and now I'm taking up some talking time. I'm mute, mute, mute. mute. Now, all right, so, so Gigi, what, what we started out with was, cause Ray always asks everybody on this thing, like, um, what does the craft mean to you? So we started talking about that. We got into the indies, and then we start we started comparing AEW to uh, WWE, and then it got it got to basically just how AEW changed and how now it's taking up the mantle once Co- Tony Khan took over the storytelling of it's WWE light now. But it has to be, unfortunately. And, and this is what we're saying: like it has to do it, unfortunately. You have to. Well, I'm the only one that doesn't agree. <laughs> and then how else do you expect the company to grow? You can't expect them to stay in the same spot uh, when they first started. They eventually will have to grow. Um, and growing is also including um, changing. Changes for the better for some people, for the worse for other people. Um, it It's float everybody's boat. Um, and that's the thing. That's the thing about pro wrestling. It's not, it's not meant to fit everybody's boat in which it's, it's not, it's not crafted to be that that way. Not, you can't craft the same boat for one wrestler and expect it to be, expect it to work for the next 50, the next 100. Because you're dealing with so many different personalities and so many people of how uh, their perception of what this is. You know, some people want to be in the business for uh, the flippy shit. Some people want to be in the business for the technical side. Some people want to be in it just for the storytelling because they want you to feel something. They want you to 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 really dive into the story. There's so many different ways to look at it.
You didn't mute yourself. I know, I know. I muted oh, myself for okay. that. Okay. I was like, no, we're not. Um, <laughs> so you dumped the paintbrush into the grape soda that I gave you. Well, then now That's you so have good. a choice to either drink it or dump it in the sink. I say drink it. Would you want me to be poisoned? It's non toxic paint. Yeah, it's not so oil based. We need the money. And if it's purple paint and grape soda, you just got more grape. <laughs> just gave me a look like. So what you're saying is I'm not getting any more soda. <laughs> That's what she much. basically asked me right now. She got so focused on painting, she, she dead ass. And it's so bad because. The grape soda is in the Tipsy Geek cup that we always get at Battle Club Pro anyway. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, like I was saying, you can't craft the same fucking boat for one wrestler thinking it's going to work for the rest of the roster. It's just not crafted like that. There's so many different types of wrestlers out there that it, it's, it, it's, it's just not one formula. It's not going to work. There has to be multiple formulas. Right. So it, it it has to change. Change is for the better. So change is for the better. Only when you change better. Listen, they always say when if it's not broken, don't fix it. Guess what? You know, it's a little broken. But, it's but, a little but, broken. Know, it's a little it, broken yeah. because of the, w, the WWE. Sorry, um. No. The WWE model is broken. The WWE well, is, this many years. is, be, no, no, is but beyond broken. Okay. The reason why the, the reason why WWE is so successful is because they're outside of wrestling business, selling the the, the mm. network, going into Saudi, no. you know, doing all these other businesses and all that. They're making they're money handling those moves, but I don't think. No, no. That's but they're making they've been more profitable being successful for their I mean but we still devoted right now, because we wanted to watch the wrestlers. No, no, yeah, but right now the most interesting story is the bloodline. Yeah. And a lot of people basically only watch wrestling uh, WWE for the bloodline. What's going on, uh Charmaine? You know what I'm saying? So so like when there was no bloodline and every all the wrestling was like, ah, People went to AEW because it was tired of WWE shit. And that's why they started watching AEW. Then AEW turned into that WWE model. And now people are like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with AEW now? And then the bloodline happened and WWE changed their, sh their model into going, now at least we have one story that's going to encompass an uh, old school feel where this is long-term storytelling. And... Everyone loves it. Where AEW gives you long term two month storytelling. Yeah, they they haven't told a long term story in a minute. But the yeah by the model, it's it's. I I think you misunderstood what I meant. No, Their no, no. model has to be the TV format, which is what AEW is going to start switching to. Little by little, they have to. WWE didn't switch a model. They just switched. Okay, this story didn't work. Let's grab your attention with this one. But their model, this is why it's lasted for so many years. It changes through the eras, but it doesn't change that similar foundation of a model. There's a reason why investors are like, you know what? Yeah, we got to put more money in. There's a reason they yeah. kiss Fox's ass so much because they give them the most money. They give them the 8K cameras. They give them all this. Yeah. It's because mm -hmm. they followed that but, nice family-friendly model. All right, so, so, all right. Let me ask you a question. Do y'all like the inner circle better than the Jericho Appreciation Society? No, I I like the, not Jericho in them. No, the no, groups I, themselves. I like the I like the group that's out now. The Jericho appreciation. Yeah, style. because you know what it is like. They don't rely on Jericho to get their time. But the then, other, as the well, other, it, it it's it, it's kind of an unfair question because the inner circle kind of started with the company. No, but the, the, the quite the reason why I'm saying that is because the inner circle was kind of the model for AEW, not the TV model, but the model of here goes some people you should know, and we're gonna put them around the greatest wrestler that we got 
to showcase them. So basically, he's like, you know Jericho? He goes to people around him. They're just as good as him. Where the Jericho Appreciation Society is kind of like the WWE model. The people around Jericho are not important. We have Nasty Boys 2.0. They don't have tag team matches. Sammy Guevara, every time he's away from a Jericho group, gets a title shot, becomes important. When he's with the, the group, he's the guy jumping off the cage. I'm trying to explain. I'm trying to think of how to explain this because I feel like no, no, I, I know what two- you're talking about. Like I'm talking, I'm talking about the actual like the way they run in the company, not the TV. Yeah. No, no, I was, I'm trying to think of how to explain it because the two groups, funny enough, are the perfect way to show why they have to change. Because the inner circle was AW at its raw form. It had Santana and Ortiz. There were two indie guys getting their shot on TV. We're focusing on okay, here are the newer guys. With the with um, the Dang. JAS now, it's like okay, these are guys you've seen already on on major level. You've gotten to see 2.0 a bit in NXT. You got to see Jack Swagger as a thing. You're now putting Daniel Garcia got his run around. So it's like now we're giving you that, and that's the format they have to go because now that's why last night uh, with the promo, it's Adam Cole in there because Adam Cole Adam Cole has that established name already. So it's following but, that WWE yeah. format. Like we're gonna give you a little bit of the newer guys, but we know who our bread and butter is. Yeah, but going back to that promo, I just want to mention that I think MJF is a better alley-ooper than John Cena in promos because he either he's a better alley-ooper. Or the guys that he's doing it to are better dunkers because when he tries to bury Adam Cole. Mentioning Vince McMahon and NXT and all that other stuff. The first response Adam Cole gives is like, oh, you're talking about my body. You must mean my body at work. Like, he just straight up been like, yo, what you said was stupid. Every time Cena says it to someone, they don't ha- they don't know how to react. And I'm not, this isn't an, on Cena. This is basically WWE and AEW for me. I, uh, I like that. I agree with they don't need to be saying fucking WWE's names at all. There's ways to subliminally... Go after the WWE without mentioning Vince McMahon. Like, he did it subliminally. And then mentioned w- Vince McMahon's name. Like, okay, bro, the first time you did it, it was a shock. Now you're doing it, it's like you're doing them a favor. No. And that's the thing that I think they need to work around is we're not just going to hide it. It's, again, it's known. There's That's been a thing. But it's like making it work so it's not legit just blatantly saying it. Like, being on the nose with it, it gives you the reaction. Yeah. You don't need to legit just... Oh, mention this and mention this. Like, just copying the promo last night. That was a perfect just on the nose right there. You didn't have to go with the full names and everything like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you think about it like this. Like, when it comes to, like, promos and stuff like that, like, MJF, everybody's – everybody – for me, MJF, when he cuts these promos, is more like Piper back in the day. Like Piper would say certain things to make you think and remind you of the stuff that you did in the past and why we're at this point. You know what I mean? And he that's why he has more of the old school feel of stuff until he starts screaming and cursing like a little kid. You know? Yeah. You know, but Matt, WCW... Mentioned WWF in the beginning with Tony Schiavone shitting on him. But never did we ever hear Scott Hall or Kevin Nash go, this particular wrestler over there sucks. Or Vince McMahon, like, it was always, the other guys in the other show, what you need to watch it for, we're the best in the world. No. They made fun of Hogan and Macho Man, but Hulk Hogan and Macho Man from WWE, not WCW, Hulk Hogan and Macho Man. They're saying these guys are too old to be wrestling now. The past was too old to be wrestling now. Yeah. WCW always was like, they hinted that WWE was going to take over. The only one that blatantly mentioned Vince McMahon's name was Eric Bischoff. And he did that as a challenge to, to Vince McMahon. He was on some, come fight me. Yeah. Again, we're not saying not to ever do it either. Because again, that shock factor, 
they know how to get a reaction. Crowd is going to react no matter how many Ooh. times you do it. But it's you don't have to do it to a nauseum level. That yeah. it's like every time we see you, we know what to expect. We know yeah. what to expect. It's like every time we see MJF, something's going to be thrown out there. But still, it, no, it's not. And then we're not saying it's something new. It's just, it again, it affects that it's like that shouldn't be the focus. Our focus should be yeah. what's happening on that said television. Yeah. Because, like, yo, even when they had, what was it, the table, round the table for three, or um, it was one interview with Ric Flair, and he was talking about working with WWE. He's like, what am I going to do? Go down to Florida and work for them? Everyone knew what he meant. But the fact that he didn't mention them spoke wonders because it's like we know about them, but it's just like that company. Like, what am I gonna work for them? Nah, I'm good. It's it's like when you're sitting there going, Vince McMahon didn't see you as a top five player. You're acknowledging one person, and yeah, people may hate Vince McMahon, and people are like, oh yeah, he fucked Vince McMahon. But if he would have turned around and said, yeah, but everywhere you went, you was never a top five player. At least in the eyes of the people that hired you. That would have been like, is he talking about WWE? Or is he talking about Ring of Honor and every other place that he just mentioned also? Again, it adds that mystique now. Because now it's like, you don't know. what It, it, it yeah. adds that questioning now. It's like, is it this? Is it this? Is, and that's better off than just saying, oh, it's directly this. So now it's like, yeah, okay, so now we know who you're shitting on. Like, yeah. yeah, like, like um, if you were going to watch like, Spider-Man into across the the the, the Spider Verse, and they turn around and said, "What you're gonna go into Spider-Man three and become Venom?" You'd have been like, "Wait, what? Are you acknowledging this is a movie?" But if they were to show a scene from there, like, "Oh shit, this is a part of the canon," you know what I'm saying? It's just different ways that you can. But you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's different ways that you can do it just to spark the people that knows mind. But the people that don't know will be on some, oh, what is he talking about? Yeah. And that's what you want. You want interest. You want it to become a conversation. You don't want it to just be cut and dry. That's like, okay, yeah. Like, we'll mention it like we are today, but there's nothing to the effect of now we're talking about it. You know, it's not going to make us even longer be like, oh, so what do you think? Like, we're, we're not, we're, there's nothing to guess about. Yeah. That's, that's true, Matt. If, you know, Scott Hall would have turned around and said, I am Reza Ramon from the WWE, people would have been like, oh, this is fake. But since he's like, you know who I am, but you don't know why I'm here, people are like, you damn right, I know who you are. <laughs> you know? And the internet did fuck up, you know, the 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 TV star. Because everybody knows the behind the scenes. And I've always been the person, like, I don't want to know behind the scenes shit. Like, knowing the fight between CM Punk and the Elite, like, I mean, that would have made the news anyway. But all the other shit that happens is like, oh, CM Punk's coming back. All right, cool. But hearing everything else that's happening, it's like, all right, yo, bro, that's not a part of the illusion for me. Unless you make it their part of the illusion. Like, if he would have come back to fight the elite, okay, are they going to talk about what happened there? Is that going to be part of the story? Because now it's personal. And, you know, you can you can choose sides. You know what I'm saying? Am I a Jedi or a Sith Lord? You know, some shit like that. But he's taking Ricky Stark's place. I don't know if y'all if y'all caught that. Like Ricky Stark's been beefing with uh, Bullet Club Gold, and FTR helps him, and now CM Punk is fighting Bullet Club Gold for some reason. But yeah, they kind of merged those two stories there. I don't know why. Yeah, they did. They completely did, and it's like. I thought we weren't done though with Ricky Starks, but we're probably gonna revisit that afterwards. Somebody needs to help Ricky out. Yo, this this is why I said when he won that promo battle between MJF and he had the title shot, give him the fucking title because I knew after that match they did nothing with him. They were gonna do nothing with him. Him. He's, he's Ray's disappointed. It, it, it sucks because it, it he kind of got the worst of the transition. If AW was still in that first year, he would have gone to championship right there because yeah. he was over. The fans yeah. were behind him. There was no way to not be like Ricky needs the belt right now. 
Yep. But because MJF now is more known and it's actually built, they're not going to give it to Ricky there. He was in that transition period that's like, fuck. They just ruined Ricky here because his whole build went to nothing. Yeah. Like, It may yeah. play an injury angle with Ricky Starks. What is yo Jay and and uh, Loki are talking? What is Bullet Club Gold? Since they never mentioned it in AEW, and we don't get New Japan over here, so it's basically whoever got excommunicated from the Bullet Club. Okay. Whoever's now over here in the states and just yeah, because Jay White's gone because he lost the two loser leaves. And uh, the juice is basically not agreeing with the new era of Bullet Club, so he's also out. So now Bullet Club Glo- uh, Gold is basically the we're still Bullet Club, but we just don't associate with the main group. Okay, so are they saying are they referencing gold as in the color of AEW's logo gold, or are they the golden era of Bullet Club? I feel like that it's kind of the the, the on the nose of like. Well, we're here, so we're just going to use that as the... I as mean, the it, I wouldn't put it past it because look what they did with John Morrison. My man turned, went from John Morrison to Johnny Mundo to Johnny Elite. Why? Because we couldn't find another last name for this motherfucker <laughs> to go ahead and premiere. It's Johnny Elite! And even Excalibur could even say that. Like, what? Are we really doing this? Oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Johnny, so, yes, I, Johnny, I, need a I think that Bullet Club Gold. The only reason why we added gold because it doesn't fuck what's our colors. AEW colors are gold. Gold, we're golden. Work, guys. You guys are great. <laughs> yeah. You guys are great. <laughs> yeah. Tony Khan, <laughs> exciting news. Another oh my god! Announcement I, made today. CM Punk. That the announcement for this six man tag, why was he so monotone? <laughs> like the fact that he's like FTR at CM, it's like, yeah, nothing. It's, it's like, like sir, why you're are not you... working with the live crowd, you don't need to yeah. wait for our reaction. We know what's coming, spoiler or not. This is you. We kind of here is going to be CM Punk in the main event. Why wouldn't it be CM Punk in the main event? You're surrounding this whole fucking thing around him. This Why is, is he not going up against the elite? Because the elite and him actually probably have legitimate beef. And they're like, nah, if I get in the ring with him, I might actually hurt him on purpose because he pissed me off. They don't want to take that risk. Not, not now. yet, at least. Not, soon. Yeah, not yet. Not, not yet. yet. That, they have to. They have to. Because, again, that's going to be the money match but it has to be where it's going to make them the most money because they know it it has to happen it's going to happen eventually but slowly and surely we'll do the cm punk and versus bullet uh, bullet club gold i guess which is funny because the whole match i've heard for the longest was it was just going to be joe and punk but now yeah we're just going to merge those two storylines because fuck it (laughs) word like (laughs) let's just forget about yeah we're we're doing ftr and this we're just going to yeah, let's merge those two matches. You know, but it, here's the thing, though. It's like, they're men. They're men. They're businessmen at the end of the day. If CM Punk is going to come back and they were like, yo, y'all sit in a room. I want to make it. I want to do a story with y'all. Make it work. I'm pretty sure at one point or another, someone's going to pop up and go, you know, if you came back and attacked us. During our match and all that other shit, people would pop like crazy, and then we'll be able to fucking build a story with that. CM Punk versus the Elite, and then we could throw FTR in there later. We could probably have a blood and guts match with you, and we could drag this out for six, seven, six, eight months. I know someone knows how to do business. Whether they hate his guts or not, they'd probably be like, you know, if we did this, we could make a lot of money. And Punk would be like, well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> See, that's the thing. If they're smart, they sit down and say, fuck it. Let's make money. I don't have to like you. Let's make money. Yes. But yeah. Again, this is this is one of those, are they smart enough to decide, fuck it, let's make money. 
They, they should be because they were well, dumb enough to fight in, 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 in everybody's fucking face. Oh, <laughs> they should be smart enough to make money. You know, if uh, Eddie Kingston and Castiglione could fucking put this shit together, I mean, not Eddie King. No, yeah, Eddie Kingston. No, yeah, yeah. Castiglione. Kingston, yeah, they they definitely definitely. Had it right. You had a spot yeah. on. And they definitely still could not stand each other, but they made it work. They yeah. made money. Just. So. Because your, your hatred for someone should not cloud your love for the business. If you really do love it, you know. I just realize I'm like super fucking glitchy. Like I'm watching our like us on yeah. the YouTube on YouTube and everything like that, and I'm just like so fuck. I'm back to where I started, where I'm being. Wanna... No, there's nothing I can do. I'm not gonna up my speeds anymore to be more. No, clear. no, no. I was gonna say, do you want to try to reset your your laptop to see if it. If it would, I already did that. Okay, I did that already. I did that the first time I fucking timed out, and I was like, like uh, that, like that was like that for a minute. That was me restarting it. it has nothing to do. It has to do with my uh, speeds. Yeah. And to be fair, all my child does is go on YouTube. She's on YouTube yeah. right now, so she not watching us because you know we're not that cool to her. But yeah, right. She's watching her YouTube, and I'm like. You yep. got to pull the IT on, G. And, and there's no uh, school tomorrow, so I can't again? fucking tell her, yo, go to sleep. You got school tomorrow. There's no school tomorrow. Why is there no school? Because of air quality? No. Um, they, they already had this, uh, these, the day and tomorrow off for some Chandler's, some shit. I don't fucking know. It, it's basically the old Brooklyn Queens Day. They renamed it some other shit. Yeah, kids That's got what so is. many days off. It's not even funny. Yo, the, the amount of days they got off now, it's like, when do they go to school? Like, yo, word, shit. Yo, she was they the one that told me, I don't, go to, I don't have to go to school Thursday and Friday. I said, why not? <laughs> yes, you do. Who told you that? <laughs> the word. teacher did. She's a liar. She's a liar. Uh, She's a liar. Liar. Like, pants on fire. No, no wait. The, Looked at the calendar and said, oh, shit. Your yeah. teacher's kind of loud. The weatherman today could be like, you know, it might fucking snow tomorrow. And schools would be like, yo, the weather said it shut down. Back in the day, Bro. we had one this through three. This is, but this is the problem now, right? We were lucky enough that when it was a snow day, it was a snow day. We ain't got to enjoy a snow day. Kids now, nope, because of the with the wonderful world that we lived in, especially of the world of technology. Oh, no worries, you can't come to school, it's okay. I put it in Google Classroom, that's right. We're doing this remote because that's what the pandemic taught us that we can connect no matter what with just a computer. That's it, word, that's it. They want the kids to have a fun life. They don't want them to have snow day. Um, I'm gonna fucking next Saturday, but how about the Saturday after that? People are still gonna watch. People are still gonna watch Jay. They're they. People are still gonna watch. Why? Because they love controversy. People are gonna watch. Why? Because sometimes AEW is unpredicted. Um, people are still going to watch because you have devoted fans that are there to watch for other wrestlers that are on the card. You're going to have people that's going to watch because of wrestling in general. Yep. You're going to, you're going to watch regardless because WWE is trash. And you know what? You still watch WWE when it was still fucking trash. Trash, yeah. no matter how bad you hated it, no matter how bad you bitch and you moan and you bitch and you moan and you and you moan no. about the fucking product because you know why? <laughs> Must be Monday nights because here you are sitting on your ass, whether you're streaming on your phone or catching it on DVR or being a dick and watching it live except you know on monday nights now we have you know watch with the uh, knuckleheads live stream you know on monday nights but <laughs> that was before our time where we made your monday nights a lot better you still watched 
you still watched. You still watched. Why? Maybe because wrestling is a drug. Maybe we're just addicted. We are addicted fiends to this fucking sport that is pro wrestling. We are addicted to the great matches, the shitty matches, the great storylines, the shitty storylines, the the jobber matches. All right. We're here for uh, the mistakes or as other people will call it botches. All right. I'm trying to be I'm trying to make sure it's leveled for everyone because I know I don't want wrestlers to get pity, pissed off when you see them in the word botch. I'm being respectful. Res I'm being respectful to the fucking craft. Yes. That's right. Bitch. All right. <laughs> but yeah, at the end of the day, you're going to watch. And if you don't watch the show, you know what you are going to do? You're going to go on this wonderful website that's called YouTube. And you're going to watch the highlights. Yeah. The way or someone else talk about the show. You're going to end up watching something. Why? Because this is what we are doing. This is It's not hard to get people to watch Saturdays at 8 p.m. for CM Punk. Why? Because it's CM Punk. And people want to see CM Punk. People like our friend... Dave from the Pro Wrestling Podcast. Myself, I want to see CM Punk again. Do I think it's going to be spectacular? No. But I do feel like it's going to add a little twist to it. And it's going to leave me as a fan, as a cliffhanger, because I know one of these days, one of these days, the Elite and CM Punk are going to cross paths. Yep. It's going to happen. Will it happen soon? Probably not. But will it happen eventually? Absolutely. Why? Because controversy equals money. Burn. Bingo. I hate that I'm fucking glitchy. I'm just watching myself and I'm like. <laughs> no, no, I hate. Yo, trust me. I hate you. Like, uh, Jade. <laughs> Tony Khan never explained how Collision is different from Dynamite. Don't want to hear it's different. Cause, well, does he need to explain it? Or can it just be like, yo, I, I don't know it. what to explain. Why, yeah. why does he need to explain what's the difference? The difference is it's on a different night and your ass is still going to watch it. Checkmate. Move on. I Fuck out of here. <laughs> it's, it, it legit, it's self-explanatory because you're going to see certain people there. You're not going to see on Wednesdays. That's about it. I'm going to the movies. <laughs> Well, we're going to be at a wrestling event on Saturday. Yep. So. Next Saturday. Even yeah. that dude that just honked. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> He's like, word. <laughs> we all going. <laughs> I, uh, well, we're all going to a battle club on uh, Saturday. So I'm excited. Uh, not this Saturday. Next Saturday coming up. What time does that start again? Um, listen, we, we, we'll get next when we no get pop to next quiz week, question, we'll get yeah. to next week. We're not here for trip. I don't want to listen, I don't want to okay. pull a show, I don't want to pull a show, and all of a sudden I'm late and I get there. Oh, what I mean, so, so if that's the case and scenario, it's on Friday in Brooklyn, 4 p.m. It starts 4 at 4 p.m. Thank, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. wait, it's on I Friday. Oh, no, for sure. It's on Friday. Friday. Look at you, look, he's about to show up on Friday in front of the school, like. Yo, I'm here. We at? Yo, I was about to be like Friday at four. Shit, I ain't gonna be able to make the it until like five. Oh man, the <laughs> air quality is still not good, man. Yo, imagine, imagine that. Right after work, I go pick up Gigi. Gigi ain't gonna be ready until six thirty. So <laughs> I, I purposely took off that day, and because I know I'm not gonna have my little kick demon with me. All right. No, not Janaya Kai, because Janaya Kai will meet over there. She's a big kick demon. The little kick demon over here will not be with me. Uh, sad, but we're going to make arrangements for Jobber Slant to see what we can do. Uh, we got some ideas out there. Um, yep, yep. I'm, I'm definitely going to House of Glory the night before, though. I, I need it. First and foremost, you are not going to tell me. Galito is going to be in the tri-state area 
and not expect my Puerto Rican ass to go see Carlito area. Okay, that's not happening. No. And then we get the return of Sonia Strong back. Yes. We're getting a lot of good stuff in House of Glory. Um, I'm very excited. Um, I know I'm going to be meeting some people there. Not all of us have our tickets. We're getting, everybody's getting little tickets. So I'm going to be there sitting by myself. If you are sitting next to me and you're watching this, please make sure to put on deodorant and wash your ass. Wash your ass first, put on deodorant, if you're a little musky, please wear some air car air fresheners around your neck. Yeah. Put some cologne on or some body spray. You know, make it make it make me like, feel like I'm sitting yeah. next to someone who has a new car and I can smell yeah. the new car smell. Yeah. That's what I want to yeah. smell. Yeah. I do the not smell want to shit smell is not a, is not appealing. Balls, I huffy puffy, the air is bad the air quality is bad enough as it is. Yeah. Don't add to it. Wash your ass. Word. And 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 for God's sakes. Don't be the double asshole that doesn't wash his ass and then still tries to hit on Gigi. It's like, bro, you stink. <laughs> you, don't don't need, hit on me. you don't need that, bro. Don't yeah, hit don't. on me, period. Because I <laughs> with such the stank look that you wish you've never fucking met me. I I've am I, I am as polite as I can be, but there's a certain point where I'm just gonna be like, can you please go fuck off? <laughs> and Cho has seen this almost yes. I tried my best at one time. Yes. Oh, I tried my best at one oh. time, and the best thing I can do is uh-huh. Yeah. Ah. Hey, Kenny. I'm like, yo, and, and I will ignore you. I will look. I will look the other way. I I will look for someone and be like, oh my god, I haven't seen you in over a month. Please save me. <laughs> a word. What up? You got the oh. the kick demon behind you. Oh. Okay, so she yeah, did. Even she did. She, she did, did do, do what I thought she yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Even with the quality <laughs> bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, I can't see my face. Bad. How bad the quality is, right? Yeah. Like, wait, 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 what? Mm -hmm. By the way, one nail that I had that I took off, I changed, I got offended. The nail, the nail got offended. I don't know yeah. what got offended. The nail got offended because she threw up her middle finger at it. Oh, uh, got you. Logic, folks. Oh my yes. god! Did <laughs> she be in the living room? No. She's still waiting for the soda. No, she got the soda. No, but she left the TV on. It's classic. They leave the TV on because you know electricity is free to them. <laughs> No, she did a drive by. Fuck you, tell. Just yeah, she did. She totally did. She was like, she was waiting. She's like, I can't wait to show my nails to tell especially this one. And I'm like, said they go that bitch ass nigga right there. <laughs> Word. No, I, like, I, let, I let mommy thing. talk to him for like an hour. She dead ass so earlier, and I, and maybe I shouldn't be saying this because she can choke me in my sleep. But earlier, she was like, you know what? I really do love toe. Like, Toe's a good Ooh. friend to us. But, man, it's so fun just to tell him, fuck you, Toe. And I was like, I felt that. And I, I understand. I I understand wholeheartedly. And I think that anybody that knows Toe will understand that, too. Yeah. And she's like, I can't wait to tell him, fuck you, Toe. And it was like. Because he's not short. Oh, because you missed. Oh, damn. I didn't even know she was still by the door. But you know what? You know what? She, you see, you seen the relationship she has. But I guarantee you, God forbid something happens to Toe. 
and he ends up in the hospital, she'd be the first sister, like, Mom, we got to go see Toe. The word. No. Oh, shit. And I'm an That's idiot. He's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> right? She, she not, no, no, no. But she just said a little bit of an idiot. Not a okay. whole big of an idiot. <laughs> not a lot of bit, just a little bit. She actually corrected herself because she just heard me. She was like, I take that back. He's a big idiot. <laughs> he's a big guy. He's just... <laughs> not tall. He's not tall, but he's a big guy. Oh, I identify as seven foot eleven, okay? <laughs> but you know, I feel like I feel like that's like my mission. If people don't say fuck you to me, they don't really care about me. They're not listening to what I'm saying. They don't know me. <laughs> no. Oh, right. So I, I was talking to the guys about this. I figure out what's Toe's new shirt going to be. Oh, Toe's shit. new shirt is going to be five tips of the day with Toe Tags. And he's going to list the best four tips that he got on the front shirt. And on the back of the shirt is going to be tip number five, which is basically, remember, go fuck yourself. There you go. That word. That was the, that's it. That's, that's the biggest tip of the day. That's, that's it. right. And boneless chicken wings is chicken nuggets. Yes. <laughs> Fucking Tyson. Oh, shit. <laughs> Everybody. All the haters out there. Fucking boneless chicken wings my ass. Oh man, so <laughs> we, we we we're get, so. Can somebody please tell me why do we have to have a week over week announcement with Tony Khan? Because he just likes to be on TV. And he said, "Oh, I'm not going to be a character. I'm not going to be nope. on TV every week. He's on I, TV, you know, every fucking week." Because I, I think. Uh, R.B. Edwards. Yeah, and looking like he fucking just killed someone because he's looking at yeah. you like this. Like, I, I think I think Tony Khan fell into the one, two, three announcements were huge. Now, if I make an announcement every week, they're gonna keep coming in to watch. Like this nigga literally made an announcement. To say next week I'm making an album. Yeah. yeah. Like, are you out of your fucking mind here? Yeah? So, like, you know, and Jackie's like the casual wrestling fan, right? And even when she saw it, she was just like, what's wrong with him? She, the first, <laughs> yeah. thing came out, first thing came out her mouth was, oh, there goes the crackhead again. <laughs> it's like making an announcement that should be an email. <laughs> Yo, that's going to be Tom's next fucking tips of the day. Just going to stare blatantly <laughs> yeah. at the camera like that. Just like, don't do crack. <laughs> Tony Khan. <laughs> like, Doesn't do crack. Doesn't have a crack clean. All right. The cocaine bear. Okay. Oh, at least, but at least the co- at least cocaine bear had a personality though. <laughs> like, he made you believe. No. So Tony Khan has personality. It's just right. too much personality <laughs> when it's live. You know. Because we gotta be like this. And we gotta do like this. This is why he cannot do these live announcements because at the same time, he's going to blow the goddamn speaker out in the fucking building with as close as he's holding the goddamn mic. All right. Trying to make these fucking announcements. Hugging everybody. And then getting his ribs broken because he wants to hug the wrong fucking people and they just squeeze him too tight where he breaks a rib. Word. I've heard this is legit what he does in real life though. It's not even just for TV and cameras. Like he's legit just this happy yo, of a person. Not yo, but not for nothing. Not for nothing. I feel like Tony Khan is one of those kids that never grew up. Nah. Like cause because he's, he's like a rich he's family. A he never matured. He's he never had to. He has money. He, he is a child that is now allowed to buy live action figures in wrestling. Because, yeah. yo, not, not for nothing, as fans, whenever we see our favorite wrestler, our initial instinct is, oh my God, I want to go over there and just hug him, whatever the case may be. But because we were raised by adults, we know 
that might not be the best move. So, you know, hey, how you doing? Shake the hand. Can I get a picture with you? Is the appropriate thing to do. Where Khan is like, nope, no one ever told me running up to a complete stranger and hugging them like they're my fucking long lost father is wrong. <laughs> you, know? you know, like, I, I don't, I, no one ever taught him that, I guess. Like, dad, hi. Yeah, like, yo, read the room, bro. When the you're making grown men uncomfortable, the there's a problem. He wasn't, he wasn't raised with love and affection, so he buys it with his wrestlers to give them love and affection. Yes. That's sad. Uh, it's, just, it's a joke. Gotta take, it's a kid. You got to take like, it for his money. New toy. New toy. New toy. Yeah. That's and, that's what, and that's what they are to him. He's new, they're new toys. And right now, his hottest toy he got... Adam Cole, baby. Yep. Yep. Adam Cole, because that promo yesterday was straight fire. Okay. It was. MJF talked his shit as he always talks his shit. I am getting a little tired, though, of them always bringing up his ex fiance. We get it. <laughs> that poor girl. That, that poor girl is like them. Them, them mentioning. I'm talking about. She needs to start collecting royalties. Right. By by, and then granted, they might not mention her actual name, but her name in the wrestling industry is MJX ex fiance. Therefore, no. she should go ahead at the character MJX ex fiance, so she She's can get paid her royalties, so she, she can go ahead and buy more man. paint for all of her paintings that she be doing. Should we at the back the next big event? Yep, facts. Word. They're just gonna have her there with a the table. Like, who are you again? Oh, because <laughs> yeah, they, okay. yeah, they no, but they did mention Adam Cole was the bad guy when he started in his career. Now, if he goes back to that and he has MJF's ex fiance just to get into MJF's mind, that'd be some kind of shit right there. That'd be that'd be dope. But what I don't understand is how come we're having a title elimination match with MJF versus Adam Cole next week. Yeah, well, someone please make the sense to me about this. It's like, is it a title match? He's, no, it's he, an elimination. So I guess if Adam Cole wins, he becomes number one contender. Which is, there goes more WWE shit for you. So he has to beat MJF first yes. they, in they order to get a title match? Yeah, they specifically said it's a title eliminator match. MJF versus Adam Cole. Yeah, see, look, even Gigi said it. Like, yeah, it, it shocked him blue. It happened. Like, they just packed I don't, I don't know about that. I just had to change my uh, my resolution. Maybe that. But um, it didn't. It didn't. I don't know. I don't get this it. This doesn't make sense, though. But it's it wrestling. Is wrestling supposed to make sense? Once in a while. Why? Why are we? Why are we going back with logic? There's, yeah. there's no such thing as logic. <laughs> I I just like kind of saw the replay of my whole thing turn like blue. It was my blue hair trying to channel myself to come back? Like come back, <laughs> you know. baby, come back. No, <laughs> you can blame it all on me. <laughs> it's your the winter time will come back. Word. It won't. It won't. But thank you for you know the enthusiasm. Little demon slayer. Uh, here before you before you go, I found it. I'm here. There you go, right here. Next week. Yeah. AEW World Championship Elimination Eliminator Match. MGF versus Adam Cole Wednesday, June 14th, Washington DC. And you Wait, know isn't what, that what they call the title matches? But you know what sucks though, right? And Ray will laugh. It's because Adam Cole is in my fantasy thing. If he loses next week, I lose ten points. Like it doesn't. It, it, it like this is not right. Like you know. Yeah. I understand your pain. This is how I felt with Orange Cassidy because I dead ass thought that Orange Cassidy was going to lose to Swerve. And I was like, damn, Orange Cassidy needs a break. 
Bro, but like, not until my yeah. fantasy is fucking done. So I'm going to need him to suffocate a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Seth is just helping me with my points. I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> Seth is my MVP right now. Seth is I getting low. Oh, Penta, my captain, oh, captain, got me points. Yes. Yo, you should have You should have got You should have put pops on your on your roster. I mean Keith Lee. I know I I need I need somebody that's going to actually uh show wrestle. faith to work. I need somebody that's going to wrestle. I he, need someone he, that Tony Khan is going to want to wrestle like once all this shit is done, I'm putting CM Oh no, I'm not even going to put CM Punk on the list for my no. CM Punk doesn't wrestle every week. He's not a wrestler that's going to wrestle every week. Aren't you? Yeah. He wrestles every week. Yeah. But one thing I am happy to see um, in Collision, the return of Miro. Yep. Thunder yes. Rosa. Mm -hmm. A possible return from Santana. Six tomorrow. There is something dropping that Santana is out there, putting out there in the universe. Does this mean WWE. his return back with AEW? Who knows? I would like to see it. Is it maybe some new merch that's dropping from Born Nasty? That would be cool too. Um, but man, I miss seeing him in the ring. I mean Santana and Ortiz together cohesively as a tag team. Do I think their breakup was real? No, I think it's a work. Part, part of me wants to part of me believe it's a work. I, I really wish it, it was just because I know both of them and it's things happen in the business. That's one of those sad things that not everyone they start out with, you're going to end up with. It's, it's, yeah. I do know big things are coming with that announcement tomorrow, but unfortunately, Monkey and him are done. That sucks. But nonetheless, it'd still be great to see him back on our television, uh, representing the Latino community. Word. With the Puerto Rican Festival and the Puerto Rican Parade this weekend. Um... I know Matt Awesome is going to be at the festival. I will not be at the festival. I am working that day. And by the time I get out, shit's already about to die down. I'm not in. I, I, I'm one of those people that I need to get there early enough. Right. Much of a crowd so I can fucking enjoy it. Yeah. As is supposed to. Buddy, yeah. Buddy, <laughs> turns into fucking so worse. Uh, like I'm not, I'm not about that at all. I'm not about that at all. I don't, I don't like crowds. I used to work in Times Square, bad place. I am not here to deal with the 116th Street antics because that should be ratchet as fuck. Oh, Once yeah. past a certain street, all people want to do is eat arepas, patalitos, and drink nutcrackers. That's Heavy. Yeah. That's it. If you bump into one of your peoples, cool. We bump into one of our peoples. But for the most part, it's. I've been too many to be like, yep, yeah, this is the same shit happening again this year. I'm good. I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I, I may look young. I just no, <laughs> no, no, no. I rather sing big pun in my fucking apartment with my goddamn Jameson. Yep. Right. Yep. See. Boom. The cars out there. Like yo, yep. we here. We so here. Heard that? Yeah. They pulled, they pulled uh, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> Jameson, big pun. We out here, baby. All they we heard was Jameson, yeah. big pun. They're like, oh, that's it. Yeah, that motherfucker put that car in reverse so fast. He's like, where she at? 
<laughs> Let me smell that hair product, girl. <laughs> oh man. Um man, that sucks. But I'm so happy to see Saint, again Santana back on our TV. It's it's just long overdue. Um it's something fresh. Um and I want to see Eddie Kingston back, but I know Eddie Kingston right now is injured. Um, a lot of people back that we haven't seen in a while. And and for no good fucking reason that we haven't seen them in a while. Maybe due to injury. Maybe because they don't have a story. If they don't have a storyline, that shit really gets to me. Because I know. Because it's like, all right, they're not injured. They're not, they're not, give them something. Give them a run in. Let somebody run in. Be a help to somebody. Y'all, y'all love making factions. Just add another right. motherfucker to a faction. It's right. not that There's so many shows now that it's like you can't fit them somewhere. Like they, they could do something. Yeah. You got four shows now. They, they could fit somewhere. Seriously. I mean, but you know they they like to put the same people on the same fucking show and then call same it different. Same people, the same people. I love. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I love me some Black Combat Pool. I love me some JAS. Um, and I love me some FTR. But I don't always want to see just them. No. Yeah. For the exception yeah, of FTR, you know. because I can FTR fight anybody. That's just me as well. I'm being biased because I just love them. Um, but, man, it's just big pun your age is showing. Go fuck yourself, pimp. All right. No, He's, a goddamn goddamn He's a goddamn legend in the Latino community. So go fuck right. yourself, all right? right? If you yeah. don't know a big pun song, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should log out. No, wait, wait until the, the end of the then log out. All right. Find yourself some endangered species. All right. Word. So. I'll just, just go through that one first before he, that just has a whole bunch of his best shit. All right. Oh, I'm not gonna give you multiple albums. I'll just give you one that has a whole bunch of them. All right. Go fuck yourself. Word. Oh, shit, I almost forgot about that, too. Eddie's gone to the G1. That's going to be fire. Yo, so, uh, G1's gonna be fire. So, so I got a question. It's based off of one of the comments here. Yeah. How come they haven't made Kenta versus CM Punk yet? That is another one where this guy is not liked by too many people. Yep. And Kenta That's legit does not like CM Punk because... Yep. Uh, he stole like, his move. took his move. And yeah. he's admitted. He said he took the move. He's, I, I, it's funny. Someone posted the clip up today. They asked him, oh, how'd you come up with the GTS? I stole it. Yeah. So, yeah, that that there is a little more of like, we we might get it, but it's one of those where money has to be right. I mean, shit, for everybody that wants to see it, money, right? Like, I feel like that should be the forbidden door match. It, it should be. It again, should be. Smart, but we shall see. Again, you know, the, there's the, there's a lot of bridges that were burned. And there's a yeah. lot of other bridges that niggas is like, I don't care how much you pay for the toll, you ain't crossing this shit. Go fuck yourself. Turn back around find another route because you ain't coming through here. You ain't coming through this forbidden door. Nah. So you can get a name off of me? Get the fuck out of here. And not for nothing, Kenta doesn't need it. He doesn't need it. CM Punk Kenta needs it more is, than him. Yeah, Kenta's having his ride right now. He's loving it. Like, he's been having a crazy indie run. I don't know how people are not talking more about it. Like He's been doing every fucking mm-hmm. indie show. And killing it. He just had a great match with Nick Wayne like a week ago. I honestly believe that if Kenta and CM Punk were to have a match, Kenta's not going to fucking care. He'd be like, yeah, I'll take care of him once I feel like I'm ready to take care of him. And then Kenta might do, like, a fucking work shoot fucking match. Like, there's no doubt in my mind 
Kenta will do a work shoot in the match itself and yeah. make CM Punk believe, oh, no, this is how it's supposed to go. And then oh, so it's gonna happen. CM Punk is going on a medium scrum talking about shit about Kenta, talking about Tony Khan wants to keep on giving me these Japanese motherfuckers, man. Mindy's cupcakes are amazing. Yo. I just keep yo. muffins away from this dude. This dude could never have muffins again. <laughs> it, was a, it, it was muffins. He had muffins. Yeah. That's yeah, it was what muffins. it was. Mindy's muffins. Hey, yo, Mindy's muffins. Hey, yo. <laughs> we all want some Mindy's muffins. Uh, <laughs> we heard that muffin tops be feeding a lot of good people out there in the world. I'm just... Word. You know, not this, not, not no plant based shit, but who knows? You know, <laughs> I need to check on my demon. Let me go. Check All right. <laughs> but you know, you know something though. I think if it was WWE that was extending the the olive branch to do a forbidden door thing, I think they would have figured out a way to have Kenta and CM Punk. At least entertained it. Oh no, they would have. If it was under them, they would have again just been like, oh, "Are we not going to do this?" Well, here's, especially if Punk's under contract. Okay, yeah, you're going to pay this fine then, or something. Tony already has this situation of, I'm just finally calming this down. I'm not going to play with more fire here. Like it's one of those where. Yeah, but you know, if you want to have professionalism. You sit there and you go, listen, this is how we can make money. Yeah. Now, if you guys want to fuck around, this is the consequences. But let's let's come to an agreement or whatever the fuck case may be. Let's make some money together. And that could be a good distraction from CM Punk and the elite right now. Yeah. No, and that's what this would be the perfect thing right now because it puts him in better light. Like, it's yes. like okay, boom, we got the six man next week. People are going to love watching that because it's like, okay. FTR in there, we get Joe in there. It's like, okay, we're we're not talk, we're not focused on the bullshit. A Kenta and Punk match, people are gonna be like, fuck it. I want to see this. No matter what he did, it's like we we get something. Like that card alone, that's gonna be the talk for a while. Cause it's already we got Okada and Daniel and Brian Danielson. Sorry. We have Kenny and Osprey again. Like it, it's such a perfect card with just two matches. Kenta and Punk would be great to add to that. Yeah, like it's it's something where Tony. This is where Tony needs some better executives on his side. Someone that can do this. Like, hey, so let's make money. You have your issues. You have your issues. Fuck it. And, we need to make money. And this is the crazy shit. You have Jr. there, who's done it for WWE. You have Taz, who I'm pretty sure is well respected in the wrestling community. You have Arn Anderson. You have Dean Malenko. You have all these people that could do it. And he, Tony wants to be the one running everything. And it's like, yo, bro, I get it. But you're missing so much shit because you're only focused on competing. You know why Apple is the biggest company, tech company in the world? They don't give a shit what Microsoft's doing. Yep. They're on some, how can we make life better for teachers? How can we make our technology better for this person? No. Then where Microsoft is on some, how can we beat Apple? No. When you're so busy chasing the WWE, you're always going to be behind them. And that's the thing. It's like, oh, for because I know the counter argument people are always saying is, oh, you don't think WWE's watching? WWE's watching, but that's not their main objective. They're no. not. They're not competing. They know where they're at. They're just like, okay, yeah, we're gonna watch. They might poach well, wrestlers over they're there. They're just they're going straight into yeah. what they need to do, and um, I think uh, they watching for the wrestlers. They like if if someone turned around, and be like, "Yo, wanna... when is Miro's contract up next year?" Keep an eye on that one. Yeah, of course they're gonna do that because they know, hey, this is where a lot of these guys are getting that little bit of fine tuning. That boom, now we have something over here. Yes. Uh, Tony just gave creative power to Stokely. That I feel like is more gimmick than actual. Uh, creative power. That's more of yeah. We're gonna have GMs. Meanwhile, that was a thing that wasn't. Gonna, that was also a oh, we're not gonna have uh, authority figures. 
But yeah. boom, now ROH has Jerry Lynn and Stokely. Like, it's 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 like what what happened there? Yeah. Uh, if, if Jay White was in WWE, he would have been booked. He would have for the first month, just like WWE does with a lot of people. We get the nice hey new toy, and then we get carrying cross. I think yeah, but I think he would have been booked if they were gonna do this. Either as a, a solo guy feuding with someone straight off the bat, or the new guy in the Judgment Day that's gonna drive a wedge between Finn Balor and everyone else. Yeah, that would have been the story they would have told. Because it's always it's one or two when you when you bring in a star, he comes in and challenges the top guy, and he has a few with him, and it normally goes nowhere. Or he's in a group, and he's the he's the wedge between the group. Yeah, and then again, it becomes forgettable after a while. Yeah. Because it's like, okay, yeah, we get the pop, we get the pop, and then nothing. Yeah. And you know, and to be honest, and to be honest with you, the reason why it is they've been booked as trash, or it seems like they're trash is because they have no direction with it. It's like I said, Tony Khan was competing to sign Jay White. He wasn't trying to have another wrestler on his roster to do something. Yep. It's evident because look, we got Jay White, and then he's been beating up Tony St- Tony Stark. Tony Stark is the, fa- the sacrificial lamb that was at the precipice of his career with Jam- MJF, and then just he just you know did what? the fucking. Sadly, what Ricky Stark has become, AEW's Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, he he was on the King of the Cow ride, forever to go up there. He got up top, whoop, two seconds back down, and it's like we need someone, we need a body. Boom, put Starks in there now. Yep. which sucks because there's so much they could have done with Starks. Yes. Again, that title raid, if they weren't in the transition period. Would have happened. Yes. But again, I get it. Business wise, they need to do that. Um, AW will always chase. WWE has too much history. They they're gonna chase, but again, if they wanna be successful, they can do the this they can do the model, but they can't compete at this level. That cannot yeah. be their view. They can't be we like to to be honest with this. Let's let's look at this with our with our let's compare it to our podcast. We're not competing with Rogan. No. We're trying to be us. We're doing what we're yep. doing. Uh, we're, we know our fan base. AEW is like, no, I see WWE. That's my target. It's like, no, watch, take notes. Don't compete. Because you have something there that, again, the alternative was working. It was something the fans needed because it felt like an indie with just a bit of a higher budget, which people like because indie yeah. wrestling is thriving right now. Yeah. But – Again, they they became that. Oh, we got to be anti WWE. We have to be against WWE. It's like no, competition is good, but don't let it just be the only thing that's making you continue. And and it's like, yo, what's the worst movie most people hate, um, hate watching? Or the one that gets the most criticized, the one where they go, "This is RoboCop." We watch the new RoboCop, and everyone goes, "That's not fucking RoboCop." If you'd have called it anything else, it would have been a decent movie. But because you called it RoboCop, this shit sucks. And AEW was a movie that was original. And then the sequel, this is WWE. All right. Uh, Ray, don't raise your hand. Be be respectful. What? Why is why you so many hand gestures? Ray, you, you're a crip? Yo, he might be. He might be. He's from Brooklyn. Oh, and yo, know, and Jay White, not for nothing. From what I see, when it comes to the American crowd, because I don't want to say AEW is doing this, but to the American crowd, a lot of the Japan wrestlers are looking like NXT UK stars. You know, like there's a lot of people that come out that we know are huge, no. but the fan base that AEW is trying to attract has no idea who the fuck they are. No, it, and and that's the thing. That's why they have to be able to. They can't just expect the, the wrestling fan to always be the one tuning in. They have to their fan base that isn't going to know anyone, everyone that comes out. Yeah, like they're banking on Okada Danielson. I saw one comment that the other day was like, "Oh, this is so stupid," because they're they're going off. Oh, this happening AW drags this match. I'm like, how? It's two of the best wrestlers in the world going at it. But I get it. To them, this isn't the crowd that's going to maybe understand why this match means 
so much. But it's like it, it sometimes you have to look at it. This is why storytelling makes sense. This is why building it, it adds that value to this. Yeah. Like sometimes you, you can't just be, oh, let's book it to book it, and maybe they'll understand later. It's like, no, yeah. you have to sometimes, unfortunately, guide the fans. You have to hold their hand a little bit, and now let's all understand it. Because you know, think about this. Then Brian Danielson versus Okada. If you're an AEW fan from the beginning, you've seen Okada once in AEW. Yeah. The last Forbidden Door. Yeah. You didn't have that good of a showing because Adam Cole got hurt. That match was a little messed up after Adam Cole got hurt and they had to rush things. He wasn't able to showcase himself. Yeah. Now you're saying Brian Danielson is having a dream match with Okada. Someone like Sho doesn't know Okada. But we can be like, yo, go watch Okada's matches. He's one of the greatest wrestlers around right now. Yada yada yada, and show could be like, oh, I saw his match is dope. You can't have, you can't depend on fans like us to tell other fan, a casual fan to do that when you c- themselves can throw out a video of Okada with his highlights, with everything that he does, and and big up the dude, promote the dude because it's only going to benefit you. And the thing is, too, they can't bank on every fan like that having someone that knows. They have to be able to explain it. Because, again, not everyone's going to have – because there are going to be a lot of fans like show. They're not yes. going to have us there to be able to um, explain who Okada is and be able to say, oh, go check this out. Go check this out. It's going to sell you on them instantly. Yeah. Like, it, it's one of those where they have to be able to give us small video package show because you have a lot of the guys that have wrestled Okada under your in your company right now. Just the series alone with Kenny. That's yeah. all you need. It sells it. Even Jay White. You show some some videos of Jay White and Okada together, now it would make Jay White look better. Yeah, and that's what you have to do. You have to show, oh, this guy's had some dope matches. Oh, wait, this Jay White was doing this? Okay, it builds it builds your brand up even more. Yep. Like, And you can even show New Japan's pro wrestling vignettes. Of the match, because you know course, they're gonna have some kind of. That's what they should be doing, especially for a show like this. Cross branding is everything right now. Yeah, like that's what you have to do. Uh, so much. Where is new? Um, where is uh, Forbidden Door gonna be held? Because I know the guy. The, I think it's the, Canada. The guy, I think okay, it's in Canada. Because I remember them saying they wanted to do another Forbidden Door, but in Japan. That's something that they they even said last year. They were like, "Oh, we could do this again." And this year they decided to do Canada. That's why that was that Osprey promo mm. when he was when he was building the face in Kenny again. He was like, "Oh, Canada, there's a bunch of horrible Canadians, so it's more to sell this whole matchup." Um, see, to, to Anthony's comment about the indie wrestling thing, that's what made AEW the alternative though, because they went back to the indies. It's always been indie wrestling. That's the thing. Every company has to rely on bringing up indie stars and then trying to bring them into their formula. Yeah. Because if not, some of the best guys you've seen on WWE products, the best guys you've seen on AEW right now, they're all indie guys. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, indie guys. Two of the best indie Mm. guys. Kenny Omega, indie guy. Young Bucks, indie guys. Like, some of the top stars, they were that. It's not that they expect it. It's more of, Again, it's it's being able to have that time to make it matter. Like, and a lot of times now, unfortunately, the fan base doesn't give that time. Toronto, Canada. Yeah, so yeah, it's in Canada. Like, and again, I'm not saying that, no, that every fan is the casual fan, but again, this is what the company now has yeah. to do is to be able to explain that. Yeah. There's a lot of fans. Like for us, we were able to be we we popped when we saw AJ. It was real though. Maybe a lot yeah. of people didn't know who AJ was at that point. Maybe they weren't fans of TNA or they didn't see what he did in New Japan. But a- WWE had to then give you a little bit of the backstory so you understood yep. who AJ Styles is. Joe Gacy, yeah, Joe Gacy was a great indie guy. I saw him a lot here in the Tri-State. Yeah, and the perfect example of this, where AEW depends on their fan base to know these people too much, is when last year when we went to. Um, Grand Slam. Yep. During their Rampage taping, the Great Muda came out. Mm-hmm. Everyone in that fucking arena erupted. Everyone erupted. 
WWE puts Great Muda on the Hall of Fame this year. Yeah. When he walks out, certain people are up. Everybody's like, I'm here for Stacey Keebler. I'm here for this person. I'm here for that person. Great Muda is just, I guess, one of the, the exceptions. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but the WWE did their best to showcase the, the great Muda in WCW, New Japan Pro Wrestling with Ric Flair. Oscar was his favorite, like, like Oscar's favorite wrestlers, uh, great Muda, how he inspired everyone in the WWE in one way or another, how he altered the, the, the wrestling industry in this way or that way. Where AEW is like, yo, the great Muda's here. And yeah. we know him. But the casual feeling, who the fuck is this old man? Yeah. And that's the thing. WWE does it. So even if you don't react as as much, you're still going to understand who this is. Like they're banking on, hey, we're going to make sure you know. So that way you have some more understanding than maybe when you walked in. If you didn't know who this guy was. Yes. Like, And that's, that's the whole point. You have to be able to do that. Because not everyone's going to know every single wrestler. There's too many out there. Like, yeah. It has to go that way. Yeah. Uh, their special episodes really haven't done well. Viewers in terms of casual fans like the WWE, they got repeat. And, and and that's the thing though, they're getting it, it's number wise, it's always going to be ups and downs with it. But they're banking on if they have enough of the hardcore fans. Like we said earlier, people are still going to watch Collision in, uh, next week. Yeah, because they're gonna the hardcore fans you, are going to see Punk. But you you know what the thing is. And I've been saying this forever. If you make a show that's good enough for a hardcore fan to love, a casual fan will be interested in it. Yep. Because think about it. Comic books are not made for new readers. They're made for the the reader that has been reading his whole life. What brings in new readers? The love of that comic comic book. book. From the original hardcore fan to the new fan. Porn! Because even the movie, the movies... Porn. Yes. Porn is the only industry that gets new viewers. <laughs> no, but you know... you know. I, I just threw something out there. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you. Taquan was mentioning porn also. Yeah, it's, an it's, it's an art. for man. <laughs> no, but you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think when it comes to wrestling, it has to have its... Like, it's like karate. It you have to have respect for it coming in here. Yep. If if you're a new fan, you you the minute you come, oh that's just so stupid. A real wrestling fan is like, what do you mean it's stupid? You watch fucking soap operas all day. It's the same shit. You honestly believe Antonio sleeping with Brenda R- Ricardo, his mother, the grandmother, and had sex with, 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 with the fucking dead body? Bitch. You know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you 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 sat there and you watch fast one through ten. And you're gonna say this is ridiculous? Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. So, so it's like when you, when you, I don't want to say cater, but when you sit there and you respect your, your 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 hardcore fans, and you give them a product, the casual fan can walk in and be like, okay, this is something I can belong to. Yep. Because that's the that's the magic about wrestling. I'm explaining to my coworker who doesn't watch wrestling, Adam Cole's entrance, and I'm like, yo, you see what he's doing right here. He's going to do the boom. This is big. Everybody loves doing it. And he's like, why? I was like, bro, because it makes the fans feel like they're part of the show. And he started doing the the Adam Cole baby because he's like, no one knows who I am. So I'm just going to say my name. And then it caught on and everybody started saying, Adam Cole, baby. And he's like, what? When he did it, he's looking. He's like, oh, shit. And he sees everybody doing it. So if he ever is interested, I know Adam Cole. Adam Cole, I'm a part of the crew now. It makes care now. It makes you remember. And it's one of those. That's what fans want. They want to feel included. That's the biggest thing. That's why indie wrestling is booming because people feel when they go to these shows, they're a part of it now. They yes. get to be in that. They get to be able to interact in a deeper way with the wrestlers. They get to have these conversations. They get to, after the show, hang out. That's where that love for it goes. And that's why, again, these companies are watching the indies because they're like, okay, who's interacting and who's getting that reaction? Yes, WWE now, maybe they're going that, oh, we're going the sports route, but they're always watching stuff. Never let, just because that's what we po- that's what people post about is, oh, WWE signed this college guy and this college guy. They're still looking at the indies. They have to. 
You miss bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Your girl's back, DG. Yo. <laughs> Ray looked like a Disney villain. How the? <laughs> I, I I guess. <laughs> Shit. She thought you had a turtleneck on or something. Is that it? It's, it's, it's a hoodie. Like... Yeah, right. She didn't see the the circles there. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys think what AEW is eventually going to have to do is maybe start a recent school up and open up next time? No, I think AEW should stick with the Indies. That's their bread and butter. It's say you know, it's like, yo, how many people do we know or we seen on Battle Club Pro in AEW Dark? It's like, yo, they don't need a school. There's plenty of people out there that deserve a shot. No. You know what I'm saying? And they also they have their feeder system already, though. They have schools because they still are looking at Dustin Rhodes school. They're looking at Cody's. Because the nightmare factor, even though Cody's in the E, it's still a feeder for yeah. both. Like it's one of those where they have places that, again, if they have if they see you have that fine tuning, then they bring you in. If you still need to learn a little more, they send you back out. That's why dark was great. Dark and elevation were great because they got to see who was ready. Like that that was the best thing about it. I can name five cap wrestlers better than WWE AEW. What is he talking about? Cap wrestlers? Uh, Creator Pro. Uh, Jay, oh. most of Creator Pro is on AEW right now. The Bear Bronson, Boulder, Cap, Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, Cap. A lot of these guys were Creator Pro guys. <laughs> like Creator Pro honestly has proven their graduate rate get signed. And again, that's showing indie wrestling thrives. Yeah. Uh they really listen to to teach guys from outside the business, then yep, yeah. it's because yeah. it's it's because they're not, and I, I hate to use it this way, they're not tainted. Once yeah. you're in the business, and once you've been around it this long, and once you have gotten to this point of this is how the indies is, and this is you're not as moldable. There are guys that can be coachable, and they're the ones that will get the shot and they'll get signed. But it's hard to mold someone that feels like this is the way they have to wrestle. Do you, right, this so, is the way they have to present themselves. Do you think that's because their character and everything is solely based on them? And they feel like, all right, I have to get this over no matter what. So it's they're trying to be that character they are other than if they were to go to, to Conan. It's like, yo, we got TV. This is how we want you for TV. And they're like, no, no, I got to be this guy. Sometimes it's that. Sometimes it's just the person itself doesn't want to improve little things that they're being asked to. Like, funny enough, this is a convo I had with someone this week. I, I, I saw yesterday you had yeah. a similar conversation. Yeah. It's, and it's like, and we even off the air, we talked a little more about it. That it's that. It's that coachable factor. That it's like, even if it's not even just character wise, even little things in ring that it's like they're looking at. And it's like, if you can't fix it when they're asking, why are we going to invest money into you? Why yeah. are we going to play? Why are we going to, again, because then we see it. This is what we'll talk about when we're we're watching AEW or watching Raw or watching SmackDown. Yo, they botched so much. Or they did this. It's like, because they're not ready to that format. And they're not listening when they're being told by someone who knows and who's ready for this product, fix this. And you'll be better. Yeah. Uh, Leo, Leo F. Sparrow, why are you not getting a shot? He fought on Jeff. I love Leo. Leo Sparrow is great. Leo is still very young in his career. Leo's a guy that I could see him being big. Um, Aaron Rourke as well. I could see them being very big. It's also timing. There's a lot of guys that you guys see now that it took them a while. We Gigi was talking about earlier, Santana and Ortiz. It took them over a decade to finally get a shot. And that was when they first got their shot in Impact. So imagine, that was another five years there. It took them close to 20 years to get onto a TV level like this. Yeah, It's one of those, not everyone can be an MJF. Then in four years, he has a contract. Not everyone's that lucky. There's something where they have to see it. If you have that coachable factor, if you have something that it's worth investing. MJF proved now he's one of the hottest commodities AEW has. It was let, worth that risk. Let, let, me, let me ask you a question. Yeah. And this is unveiling the the behind the curtain. <laughs> it, it, this but, is what this episode's yeah, been. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're just yeah. But it, it, it's your opinion of what you've seen. Yeah. 
Do you think someone that doesn't know the business that walks in would typically be a better wrestler than someone who grew up loving this business? No. Okay. You have to, to me, and they, they, again, we see the college stars, we see that. I think you have to have some interest in this. You can't just be going in blind because, yes, you could have the athletic ability, but it's going to be a lot harder to teach someone that knows nothing about wrestling. To me, yeah. I've seen it. Like, I feel like you have to have some love for this because that's what makes people continue. It's like, even if you were just a fan of it as a kid and you never thought about getting in and then boom, you get the opportunity to train. That person will be a lot better than someone that just, I don't even know what a wrestling match is. Cause they're not going to be able to, you're told, Oh, do a suplex. That's a suplex. The passion is so much different from a person that's, being everything that is wrestling and and being like devoted as a fan kind of giving giving up their free time and their free will to go ahead and learn about this and then to be able to be like you know what this is something i want to do i think to kind of basically piggyback uh of what ray said there's no way of will teach that there's a lot of people that's like, oh, I've never really watched wrestling. I just got into it. I started liking it. I really love it now. And now I'm just getting into it. And there's nothing wrong with that. But then you had those diehard fans, wrestling fans, who are still wrestling fans that are wrestlers, that are referees, that are commentators, that are, are, are adding their own to the wrestling industry. Look at us. We're fanatics. What are we yeah. adding? We're adding a fucking podcast. Some people may see it. Some people may not. But we've gotten a lot of great compliments from a lot of great independent wrestlers that basically said, you guys are basically the podcast for independent wrestling. And I love that. I, yeah. I, I, I want to hear more of that. Why? Because it shows what our contribution is to this industry. And what our knowledge is based on what we see. We're, we're not experts. We're not wrestlers. We're not, you know, we're, I, no. We're speculators who've been watching this and just, just, being an, it, just being an observer of how this has been going for the last 30 plus years. And we're still yeah. learning. We're yep. still learning. We're still adding layers to that. And with that, that experience, with that, that grows knowledge. Knowledge that a, a, a that is just going to get into it will never have. They can learn it. And it's not to say they can. But to have that passion for it, as a soul, just recently getting the passion for it, there's a big difference. The, that's the biggest thing. You can't teach passion. No. Nah. You can't. You can teach, and this is something every trainer I've seen, and even when I was when I was training, you can teach anyone to wrestle. The biggest joke the biggest joke of it is you can teach a donkey to wrestle. <laughs> you can't teach them to have passion for the business. Yeah. Like the the comment here about it tainting. It, it'll taint people that have been a part of the business, but having at least some love for it or at least some enjoyment of it, you need that because you need that heart in this. There's no one that just off the street that never thought about wrestling is going to have that passion for it. They're going to be like, this is too hard. Why am I doing this? What What's the point here? They're not having that, oh, man, I saw WrestleMania once. I want to make it there. Or more of a modern fan now. Oh, I saw double or nothing. I saw all in. I want to be a part of that. Or hey, they just saw that local indie. They saw Battle Club show and were committed. Like, you know what? I want to make it there. I want to get that crowd reaction. I want to get streamers thrown at me. Having that at least, it helps to be able to be molded to get there. Because again, anyone can be taught. But not having that passion for it, it's not going to get you far. Because that's the, the perfect example for someone that doesn't have the passion, but was taught, and I'll get heat for saying it, but fuck it. To me, Ron does that. 
Yeah. Wrestling, yeah. But she doesn't have the passion for the business. No, yeah. Because you hear it when she talks about it. She complains about everything. And she yeah. breaks the fourth wall every time with it. But I don't see the love for it. Yeah, I don't me see neither. like she's complaining because she hates that this is what the business has become. It's more of she's complaining because, oh, why doesn't this shouldn't be this way? It doesn't, she doesn't understand it. Why doesn't it work for me, but it works for everybody else? Yeah. yeah. And then we go back. Then let's go back to what we started saying. Not every formula is going to work with every wrestler. It's not going to work for every performer. It's not going to work that way. Why? Because people don't work that way. She is what we call a, a, a different, she's the celebrity entrance to this wrestling industry. Okay, you have your technicians, you have your your fl flippy guys, all right? You have, and then you have those guys who made a name outside of the wrestling industry and wanted to take part of the wrestling industry and didn't know what they were getting themselves into until they fully emerged in. Yeah. You, you know, I, I, I've spoken to somebody today about that. And we were talking about Bad Bunny and, Jay, and, Lo, and Logan Paul. And she was like, why do you like, you don't like Logan Paul, but you like Bad Bunny and blah, blah, blah. It's because, yes, they both may have love for this industry. But when you see Logan Paul wrestle, it's him pretending to be a wrestler. But when you see Bad Bunny wrestle, it's him getting to live his dream. Yeah. And again, that passion shows Bad Bunny committed to fully getting in there because he was that same kid, just like a lot of us, that watched it, loved it. And the minute they were like, would you want to do it? He got in there and he put in that crazy amount of work. Yeah. Like that shows it. The match that he did, the amount of time they gave him is not something they give to just anybody. That's like, yeah, a celebrity got a, a 30 minute match. With two segments involved. <laughs> yeah. That's not seen. That's something where it's like, you know what? You proved it. You did the work. Here you go. And to go with Anthony's comment there, you're mentioning three guys that all had amateur wrestling and all three have watched wrestling beforehand. They may have not wanted to get in the business, but again, they knew what wrestling was. And they and, knew what this was gonna be. Yeah, and also also they have respect. Yeah. Because, you know, you may not have passion, but when you have respect for it, it's a different story also. And then, like, look at Butterbean. Yeah. He had no respect for this shit. And he just went out there and he's like, you want me to hurt Bart Gun? All right, I'm going to hurt him. And that's it. But Ken Shamrock turned out to be a decent wrestler. Yeah. And he had that amateur background because his UFC yeah. style was a wrestler in there. He was a technician yeah. through and through. So he was able to transition. But again... How long was Ken Shamrock's career? Mm. And again, I, I like Ken Shamrock, but how long was his career? It shows. Without yeah. passion, you can be on. You can have matches. We've seen a lot of people do it. But how long is it going to last you? Yeah. Uh, and it, no, yeah, the work ethic. That Jay's comments right, too. You have to have work ethic in it. And that comes with it. Having that passion, having that actual respect for it, and having the decency of treating this as just like any other career. Yeah. You know what, you know what the thing is with Rhonda? I think Rhonda is just going off her pure athletic, her, her pure ability to put, to do her, her, her judo. It's hard for me to say the wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I can't say athleticism with Ronda because we all seen it. She and you can't say technical ability. We, we also, but the way she does a hip throw and she can put on an arm bar is exceptional. Yeah. And I think she she uses those skills and she leans on that but as that's, a crutch that's and has part of her technical skills. So she's not she's not one of she's not first and foremost a prize fighter. She's she is a privileged celebrity. That should have been part of NXT 
the way that they put Shayna Baszler through it because that made Shayna Baszler into a better wrestler overall. Now, this is the thing. Shayna Baszler, she honestly, she could put the hurt into a lot of people. The Queen of Spades did run NXT for quite some time, and her title reign was fierce. All right? She didn't have to be the prettiest bitch on there. And I think when you get to the main roster, you end up losing that focus that you need to be the prettiest bitch on there. You know? Um, yeah. I They gave the title to Ronda Rousey. Did she deserve it? Absolutely. It's a disgrace that they actually put the title on Ronda Rousey um, because she did absolutely nothing with it. She made it into a joke at one point. Um, and the fact that when she first started her career and then she kept breaking that, like you guys said, the, the, uh, that, like she, you keep seeing all these Twitter videos and all these other videos on her site and shit like that. Wrestling is fake. You know what else is fake? Ken, uh, uh, the fucking Kane and Undertaker. They're not really brothers. That's fake. All of this shit is fake, okay? I, just to do it, whatever, whatever. And guess what? That rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Even, if, very it wasn't, oh, even if it was like a work shoot or a shoot or whatever the case may be, it, 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 it could have been, it was a work. Right, it was yeah. a work. I'm working the people. You ain't working up a lot of people's nerves. That's what you do. The funny part was that was her excuse. Oh, I'm getting a reaction. It's like you're getting the reaction from the wrong people. You're getting yeah. the reaction from the boys in the back. You're getting a reaction from anyone that has ever stepped into a ring. You're not getting the fans because the fans are like, yeah, yeah. The fuck? You know, like, I showed. I showed the interview that Vader and The Undertaker had in the Middle East where he asked Undertaker if this was fake. And The Undertaker did a very diplomatic answer. And I was telling my boy, I was like, listen, he's stuttering because he doesn't want to break The Undertaker character. Yeah. And he also... Because it's he very knew. easy. Yeah, it's very easy for him to come out of pocket and just go after this dude, which he wants to do, but he has to maintain his character because he never broke k -Fep. It was that, and he also knew if he go if he reacts a certain way, and again, it makes the makes him look bad. bad. And then Vader, Vader, oh, Vader, Vader was like, I want to answer that question. Can I answer that question? This look fake uh, to you, motherfucker. Let me tell Vader you. was a bit Vader was yeah. that dude to do it, though. That's the thing. Yeah. You couldn't ask the dead man that question during that time because the yep. dead man is supposed to be the dead man. And K-Feb was such a protective art. Yes, I will say it. K-Feb was an art, and that was part of the art of wrestling. Why? Because we honestly believed back in the 80s and back in the 90s that the Iron Sheik and Hassel Jim Duggan fucking hated each other. We believed yep. back then that Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant fucking hated each other. And there was a lot of truth between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels hating each other. Yeah. And they even buried the hatch in the end. But nonetheless, when it comes to certain k characters, they didn't want anybody to break the characters, period. Why? Because you're breaking that illusion that is the art of wrestling. You're, you know, we started off with all these k -Fep. Look at these characters that we had in the 80s and in the early 90s. You have your Macho Man. You have your Coco Beware. You have your Jake the Snake Roberts. All right? Who is crazy enough to bring a fucking snake to bite Macho Man Randy Savage in the middle of the ring? And even though it was supposed to be ha, 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 it was that moment when Jake the Snake realized, oh, fuck, this fucker is really latched on to this guy. Yep. He ain't I coming off. die tonight. Do the hands are Oh, man, yeah. Randy Savage, I am going to die tonight. Yeah. And he did it. Yeah. He survived. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But all, all these things back then, you wouldn't be able to fucking get away yeah. with it. Vader was that perfect guy because Vader just always seemed like a hothead in general. 
Yeah. Uh, Vader also got arrested for that. That was the yeah. funny part. Vader yeah, got I arrested remember. for that yep. because of and that he wasn't the first because they're this is always the question that's thrown around every time. And that conversation never gets easier to explain because people still, even after you explain that, again, it's not fake. Because if it is, why the fuck does my neck still hurt? Yes. Uh, See, but, the, that's the thing. Rhonda doesn't have any respect for the business because the more you shit on it, the less people care. Yes. And if you work here and you shit on it, more people are not going to care. That's like if I tell people, if I promote this podcast to people and I say, oh, it's just a bunch of idiots talking, who wants to see that? Yeah. But when you promote, they're like, oh, we're shooting the shit about wrestling. We get into this, 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 this. People don't know anything about wrestling, but like, I'll tune in. Maybe I can learn something or something. You know what I'm saying? Something. Like, it's adding how many, value like, to it. That's yeah. all you want to do is add value. Because if you don't value what you're doing, why the fuck is anyone else going to care? Yeah. What's the I, point? And Anthony over here saying that he loves seeing our show because it makes him feel better, you know, watching wrestling and all that other shit. And that's the type of shit we want to hear. But it's like, Ronda, wrestling's fake. The brothers are this. First off, that's no one's business. Second off, if you wanted a reaction from somebody, you could fucking say so many other things about the business. It, it's you don't she have could, to work the business. That's the thing. Yeah, she and that's again, it goes with the passion because she doesn't know. She doesn't care. No, it's not even that she doesn't know. She doesn't care. Yeah, she, she wanted a reaction. Fight. She wanted cheap heat, and that's yeah. what she got was cheap heat because it gave the fans a reaction of, Yo, what the fuck is this? What is she going off about? But again, you're getting the heat, the actual heat now from people that have put their bodies online, people that have fucking. They would wish to be able to still do this. You don't think fucking Draws wants to be able to say, "Oh, this is fake." Yeah. Meanwhile, this motherfucker is still in a has been in a wheelchair since fucking the nineties because of this shit. There's a lot of guys. Mark Mero, Hayabusa. Yep. Hayabusa in this. Don't call Steve Austin still mm. walking around. The fact that we were able to see him in a WrestleMania match with Kevin Owens blew yep. all of our fucking yeah. minds because we'll Ray never get to see something like that again. Rey Mysterio killed somebody in the ring. It was because he the, the, his neck was deteriorated and he was entirely decapitated. But some people die in this ring. Yeah, again, it's it's one of those where no fucking death on fake. You really feel well, shit listen, enough as it is. I right. hear you, but I'm just if saying. If anybody like, was, really died in the ring, it was Owen West's fault. Yeah, it that was. was. Nick Man's that fault. was. Yeah. People, but there, there Hogan, has been deaths and there has oh, been yeah. a lot of crazy shit that H can happen. Hogan lost two inches of his height and has 10, 10 back surgeries. Nash has to walk funny because he had like what seven knee re knee replacements and all that other shit. Like a lot of people, they 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 destroy their bodies for our entertainment and mm -hmm. to shit on it. Even as a fan, like that's bullshit. Like you, I may not be a fan of the wrestler, but I respect the fact that he put his body through that willingly to entertain us. Absolutely. And to shit on that is is blasphemy. Yeah. Don't give a fuck who you are. That's why I always like I always put it in the perspective it. like this, right? Stupid bitch. Wanna ask me this stupid fucking question? Great. Yes. So let's just have it that you and I are in a wrestling match, right? We're going back and forth, everything's dandy. Now you decide that you want to do this extract, right? on the top rope to the outside of the ring. And you're supposed to land on me. Now you're supposed to trust me with your body so I can catch you because at the end of the day, yes, it's, these are stunts that are, you know, performed professionally and everything like that. But at the end of the day, it takes two to tangle, baby. It's just not a one way street. It takes two people to make something happen. Not believable, even if you don't see it being believable, like all these strikes to the faces. I get it. But yeah. hypothetically speaking, you decide to go ahead and do that move off that top rope. You expect me to catch you. Now, if I was unprofessional, I wouldn't fucking catch you. Yeah. So what happens to you? Do you get hurt or do you land on your feet like a cat? And they're like, yeah. and it's always stupid bitches. So I always want to make sure that I make them feel slightly uncomfortable 
with like right. now do you think i would catch you <laughs> no i wouldn't yeah. you, you, you you know when when people when i tell people <laughs> i watch wrestling and they go oh i can't watch it because it's stupid it's like yeah sometimes they go overboard and they do stupid things but it's not fake Again, I, I, my, my neck still hurts. My yeah, back cause, certain mornings. Are fucking... The thing is, they don't stop the match and have a stuntman come in and fucking jump on my a, on neck a pad. hurts for you, Ray. All right, you know, my neck hurts for yeah. you. And then yeah, the, yeah. this schmuck right here always wants to fucking hurt you and injure you, I, and allow to put you in your fucking place. Right? You ain't going your hands his on Ray. Damn it. His this back's shit going is through real. Table. Lala's in You're Germany. She can't help you now. <laughs> Yo, tell us about to try to take advantage next Saturday because Lala ain't here. That's right. Yo, Auntie, we need a, one flight back, please. <laughs> but um, no, and that's the thing. It's stuff like that. Like when I hear that conversation about, oh, so is it fake? Like I, I heard this the other day from, again, people that don't watch wrestling. They were asking and it's like, like, oh, yeah, so you guys just practice. You guys rehearse it, right? I'm like. Rehearse it. And I looked at my boy because he's a wrestler and he's been doing it. I'm like, yo, we ever got to rehearse a match? That's a thing. <laughs> and we're like, this we're dumbfounded because I'm like, we had a we could have rehearsed this. <laughs> like it's like and again, it it comes from not knowing. But when people then still get explained what wrestling is and they're still like, oh, so it's fake. It's like, yeah, my fucking dislocated shoulder is fake. Like be like it, injuries it, it, are real, concussions are real, torn ACLs are real, <laughs> like a broken leg from doing a fucking that the, what what was that fucking Pentagon move that he did the Canadian destroyer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. All right, yeah, that that was real. Ask yeah. that boy. Ask that boy if wrestling is yeah. real or fake. Yeah. You tell yeah. me. But then, then, then there's the word like, oh, that was such a stupid move. This Terrible. This is no wrestling that is not shit. terrible because of shit. Like the shit yeah. happens. I think that they initially went up there to be like, we're gonna do this move. You might break your leg, but it's okay. It'll be one hell of a yeah. match. Yeah. That's the that's, 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 It's 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 and, and again it, the thing is Jay's comment there, it shows though, even the simplest moves, it still does something. Because the Hogan leg drop, simple move. It's a leg drop. That fucked up his spine. Yep. Because over the years, that's going to fuck you up. Randy Orton, RKO's, fucked him up. There's It's the simplest things. We Your human body is not supposed to go through what you put it through in wrestling. Yeah. Because every bump, and it's, it's no lie, it feels like getting into a car crash. Every fucking time. And there's no days off, neither. It's not no. like the NFL, you play one game a week. No, These people are doing this shit seven days a week, twice on Sunday. And the thing is, it's not just the wrestling. You have to fucking go through training. You have to do your actual shows. You have to be working out, which also, you're doing this on fucking basically no energy at certain points. But you have to push through and lift weights. Your body's never fully healing. Like, when you see guys there, oh, what happened to this guy? Why hasn't he been around? I don't think he's injured. It's like, yeah, he's probably finally resting. Yeah. You can't do this. You're not supposed to be doing this as crazy as certain people do it. But again, they do it because they fucking love this business. Yep. And and for a prime example, too, like, if, if we're really thinking about it. Kenny Omega, when he took that long leaf of it, one, it hurt the company. It did. But it it... He needed it. Yeah. My man was he, fighting with a broken body limb from limb. He was a guy that legit, the fact that he was wrestling with as bad as vertigo that he had, fucking his body was basically just going to give out on any day. Like, the fact that he was doing this, the, I'm glad he took that break because it might have hurt AEW for a year, but it gave us Kenny Omega possibly for a few more years. Yeah, absolutely. All the crazy yeah, I didn't realize stunts, that all the crazy stunts that and moves that Will Osprey makes. 
the the people that go through matches at GCW alone. And I give them fucking a crazy amount of credit as well. Because I know, oh, there's a fan base that hates deathmatch wrestling. I give them fucking a bunch of respect. Because they're also doing it in a way they're not trying to kill each other either. They're protecting themselves. They're taking a lot more pain with all that crazy shit, but they're making it so they can fucking tell a story in there and entertain everyone. Like, it leaves them with an experience that is never, in all honesty, that they've never. Like, I'm, I'm excited for the summer because I know GCW is coming for the summertime, and I'm definitely gonna go to Atlantic City to watch. Happen. I'm making. I'm manifesting it out there. It's going to fucking right. happen. I'm going to see it. Not up close. I'm not that dumb. No, I I I go up close when I know I'm semi safe. Semi safe yeah. basically means first row or second row. All right. Sec preferably second row is semi safe. It's not safe on the first row because it they will land on you. Um, and you have to keep them. No, no, no. There's too many people to keep. That's a lot of mouths to feed, and I'm not paychecking about that. <laughs> I got enough for me and one person, maybe even two, if I want to have a guest, you know. But nah, and, and wrestlers are hungry. Okay, you see how big these motherfuckers are. Okay, they, that means they burn a lot of calories in that fucking wrestling ring. Okay, that's a right. lot of rice. I'm not buying. $30 worth of rice for two nights only. Go fuck yourself. I don't think so. I'm not keeping them. I I shall return them. Here's my <laughs> buyer's remorse receipt. Fuck you. No, this will not trap me. No. No, but GCW, like all of them, like I, I went to their show when they had it in, um, in Long Island City. It was dope. It was, it it was still amazing. They still went through chairs and tables and a whole bunch of shit. But the fact that what we see where it, the restrictions have been lifted has been oh, yeah. absolutely insane to watch online and to only see it in person is going to be quite an experience. And I'm just going to be there clapping. Yeah, yes. the, the athletic yes. commission definitely doesn't allow half of what they get to do in AC in Jersey, but it's quite an experience. I've gotten to do a few uh, deathmatch shows, and the first time I ever did one, I did not know what to expect. So I got a front row seat, and um, yeah, that glass come uh, fucking landing on you is uh, it's quite an experience. <laughs> so yeah, front row might not be the best option for the no. for, for Jersey or AC. Uh, I'll, I'll call, listen, Couple of my friends already told me, "What? I don't think you should sit in the front." Or I would not suggest that. Okay, since you would not suggest that, then I shall take your suggestion, and I'm gonna run with it because you experienced it. Yeah, no, I still got glass in my hair. Gotcha. Yeah, hmm. no, it, I, I did not know, and I'm like, oh fuck. Okay, um, I know I paid for this, but I'm gonna go move over here and just hang out around this area. I want to feel safe. Like after light tube, after so yeah, y'all sells, but please don't involve me. Word. <laughs> I do not wish for my body to be covered in the same color as my hair right now. All right, and I also wished for it to not rain anytime soon, even though we really fucking need the rain. Because if I walk outside with no umbrella. We will have a red river <laughs> going down a Bronx Hill. And then they're going to stop me asking me if I fucking kill somebody. And I'm going to just be like, no, I just came from a GCW event. I just, there's glass everywhere. <laughs> Pizza cutters. Insane. We're good, officer. <laughs> they were like, uh, we got a drunk bleeding lady here. <laughs> we're gonna need backup. Not bleeding. <laughs> My hair is <laughs> he dripping down this way. I'm just like we're coming out looking like the Puerto Rican carry. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Word. That you know what's funny? That's who I was picturing in my mind, but I forgot I didn't know who the fuck it was. Uh, <laughs> it fucking works. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, Anthony wants to know who you think is a better heel, Iron Sheik or Roddy Piper. Oh, fuck. Oh. Ooh, Iron Sheik. Because he never got love from the people until much later. Riley Piper was able to play face and heel. Um, Iron Sheik was just a heel overall in his whole wrestling career. Um, Sheiky, baby. And the only thing is, is that Piper had better uh, hook, line, and sinkers. Piper she, had the best promos. Yeah, Piper was a great promo. Hands down. Piper had the best promos, but who got the bigger heat as a heel will always be Iron Sheik. My man got death threats at him, yeah. along with fucking Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah, the, the minute Slaughter that turned, heat, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Stock it. Get two kids <laughs> Fuck, as a it's hard because as a fan, I want to say Piper, but because of just seeing the heat that you want, because Piper was a guy that you hated, but you still were like, you know what? I can I, I can kind of cheer for Piper. Sheik just had that heat that was like, no, fuck this guy because he's anti-USA. Like you wanted no matter who he went in there against. He made people care about fucking Hacksaw Jim Duggett like he was fucking the true patriotic hero. Like, if, if you can get that, that you can make, no matter who you're in there with, they're the fucking biggest baby face we've ever seen. Yeah, fuck it. It, it has to be chic. It has yeah. to be chic. And I think Whitey right, Piper is, is more of a stone cold. You know, he's like a, he's like more of a stone cold that's type here where he was a bad guy that everybody liked. It's a it's a love to hate. You love to yeah, hate you know, him, and you hate to love him sometimes. Like, cause you hate him to love him the first round. Yeah, and you love to fucking hate. Like, there's there's just so many ways to kind of go about it. Um, yeah. Roddy Piper was like, "Oh, you think I'm an asshole? Just wait, I'll show you what a fucking asshole is." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, Piper was an asshole. Girlfriend. That's the best part of waiting. Piper was an asshole. Yeah. Sheik was just like USA. <laughs> Yeah. Again, he did stuff that it was just quick. It's like with Piper, it made you think, like, wait, do I want to boom? Do I want to? It's like you're you're there that you're conflicted. With Sheik, it was just straight heat. It was just that's it. You're booing because you know this dude's about to do something that we're gonna get offended by. Yeah. And think about heat though. You know what's funny? What do you think about it? Stone Cold really was bad at being a heel. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's the biggest heel that got a babyface reaction. And and Bret Hart was bad at being a babyface because he got the heel reaction. He was a he was a babyface in Canada and a heel in America simultaneously. No, it, it's just that he, I, I love Bret Hart, but man, he struggled with his promos. I I love me some Bret Hart, but man, Bret Hart struggled with promos. Man, he was a little I think that's he he. he he was more comfortable as a heel on the microphone than he was as a face. And I think that's and what ruined him too. Was that mic mic skills or everything with it? Like great work ethic, great wrestler, but promos make the fans react. Like, yeah, it, it was a little bit difficult because when you had the Heart Foundation, you know, you had. Jim the Anvil Nyhart as the he was he had the best mic skills. Yeah, Nyhart had the best mic uh, like mic skills out of the, the Hart yeah. found the family, right? I, yeah, I, I put it to you this way: it's like the the promos sell the match, and when you have somebody that can talk, you want to listen to him because this is going to further the story. Bobby the Brain Heenan, you want to listen to Paul Heyman, you want to listen to. Cena when he spoke, you want to listen to him. Roman Reigns now, you want to listen to him. There's, you know, there's so many people that when they speak, real Ripley, when they speak, it's like I want to know what you're about to say because I know what you're about to say is gonna be very important to what's happening in the future. Yeah. 
and and that's that's where that's what you need when it when if you're not in the ring wrestling you need somebody you need people to have interest in you to be able to talk he did but they were still the slaughter thing it was just it was easier to turn though because slaughter was already becoming that arrogant like should i even be around you people anymore so that doesn't kill chic because i'm looking at anthony's comment it's like yeah but you know you also got to remember sergeant slaughter was like the big show he went from heel to face to heel to face to heel to face almost every week that we just I find remember, out. Yeah, I remember that. Over. Remember the apology. <laughs> he was, he was the prototype. Cut? He was the prototype yeah. for the yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yo, One remember of the, the prototypes. Promo he cut where he where he was like, "I want my country back," and he said the Pledge of Allegiance, and the whole crowd said it with him, and they loved him again. And then, boom, he's back with Saudi Arabia with Iron Sheik and and what's his name fighting Hogan. WrestleMania, you know what I'm saying? Like this guy flip flop. No. Every chance it was like got. finally we were good with him. It was cool. Yeah. And then corporate sergeant slaughter. It's like okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the one that was by the book, and then you have one that was like for the people, and then you yeah. have one that's like fuck the people. So you literally yeah. have three different sets of, of sergeant yeah. slaughter, you know. And then you have to it was I should come with respect because of what I did, and I have people like DX. Yes, that's like no. Yeah. no. <laughs> but it, it, it adds right. character to to uh Sergeant Slaughter, you know, everything like that. Um, it's really to like kind of really think things like who was the best villain? Like at one point, you couldn't tell me this villain of an era was, was fucking Jake the Snake. What the fuck yeah. Happened? Literally bit fucking Macho Man in the middle yeah. of on live TV, and, and we all and, saw it, and we were like, "He's gonna die!" And that's yeah. that. I don't give a fuck. And he was, says, I as a he child, he was willing to Man. smack Miss Elizabeth with a chair. Yeah, but I thought the Macho Man had. I thought somebody gonna yeah. have to suck out the poison out of his arm. Have to fucking. Mm amputate his arm. He's not going to be able to do the elbow anymore. <laughs> the, the thoughts that run through a child, they're going to chop off his arm. He can't do the elbow no more. How can he do this? We just... What? <laughs> not this what up, Leo? <laughs> yeah. And, yo, yeah, and, um, and yo, you want to talk about fucking long-term storytelling. Like, that oh, Macho Man comes running out at the Royal Rumble... And I don't give a shit. I'm going after Jake. I'm not here to win the title. I'm here to fuck Jake up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he comes in, he fights Jake, he jumps over the ropes, and he goes and chases Jake down the fucking ring. It's like, yo, it's beautiful because it's like, yo, what? And it's like, no. Right now, we got a, we got a madman going after Jake. He's going to kill him. No. That, that's, that's part of the story. That's no. what makes you like, yo, this, wait. He could have got a. Oh, he really gonna fuck Jake up. It, it, it's on now. Like they know we fuck this. It's like I don't. You could have handed me the title. I'm going to fuck him up. Nope. <laughs> and that was the best thing because they get it. Yeah. It adds that a little bit of realism because now yeah. you're like, oh yeah, you want to fuck him up? Fuck a match. You just gonna go fuck him up. Like. Yo, hearing the story when they did that spot though, that Macho's like. Have the snake bite you first, and then we'll do it. Yes. <laughs> Here's he that part after, ankle. and it's like, yo, to think how long he was biting him in the ring, though. <laughs> yo, because he smacked the shit out of the snake. Yeah. You saw, he said, bah, but, man, the bite more, him. More, but the more he smacked, it's fucking <laughs> like, yeah. yo, what the fuck you just hit me for? Yeah. Ah, like, what you gonna think is gonna happen? But he was like, yeah, the worst part is oh, like he had a fucking, oh man, yo, I yeah. that is that is if I ever see Jake the Snake at Comic Con again, I would totally ask him about that all over again. I was so starstruck when I saw him. Like, oh my god, you're Jake the Snake, fucking Roberts. Oh my god, the Snake, Macho. 
You didn't kill him. <laughs> I thought he was gonna die. It worked. <laughs> oh man. Uh, ooh, Sean or Brett? Mm. Should wait. What? The Sean or Brett? I guess he's saying which is the bigger heel. You Sean. know that's crazy. <laughs> I think they both were in the same boat. Okay, this one I have to ask. Are we asking in terms of what they did on TV? Or just who's the bigger heel? <laughs> no, yeah, no. That, 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 who's, who's greater? Wait, who's, who's greater? Oh, who's the greater? Same? Is the yeah. answer going to change? <laughs> it does. I'm pretty sure. It's, like, it's not. It's like if we're asking who's the bigger heel just because of what they were doing, you, it's yeah. Sean hands down. You, you, know, you know something? I'm a I'm a diehard Shawn Michaels fan. He's my top three: Hogan, Shawn, and Ray. But if you're gonna do it like logistically by the numbers, let's say Shawn, um, Bret Hart never gets kicked in the head, right? I honestly think Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels are gonna be in the same level at the same points of their career. Like if if Bret came back after seven years the same way Shawn did, I think he's putting on the same level of match. Like in ring ability, I think they're equal. Not talking about promos or that, but yeah, I but think in ring ability. That into. You have to add that yeah. in. That's what made Sean still be able to have a career as long as he did. Because Sean was still able to get you. The whole build for Sean and Taker was promos, it was all promo. Brett would not have been able to sell that years later of why this match means so much. He's not going to give you. That emotion of like, I need this win. If I can't beat you, then I don't deserve to be here anymore. Sean could do that because Sean knew how to tell that story. He knew how well, to grab your attention in there. Yeah, because I think Brett's character, it would have been the reverse. Because I don't think Brett ever played second fiddle to anyone. He was always, that's an issue. You're I'm not the guy be have- you have to beat. And that's the issue because yeah. you're not going to be able to have a long career like that because someone has to overstep. Someone has to be the next guy. Like yeah, but but I'm just talking about like in ring ability. I think they're even. The in ring, yeah. But yeah. if we're gonna go career wise, who was greater? I, I got to give it to Sean. And again, I, I'm a fan of both. I study oh, yeah, yeah. both of them, but I got to give it to Sean just a little bit more. Yeah. DX really helped out Sean. It, it did. It the gave him arms, something. Yeah. It gave him out of just the the clean cut. It was now we get to see Sean having some fun. Yeah. Like, I, I think I think Brett could have benefited when he went to WCW if he would have went there faster after the screw job and just let his shit out. And then it would have been like, okay, we got past it. Let's go do our thing. Because it was so awkward in WCW with him. Yeah. It was it was really just like it. He never recovered from it. As much as they could have made a lot of money with it, it was just downhill. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I don't think Sean would have benefited in Evolution. Just because of what the group was, it's... it's, Yeah. It's weird. Because Sean and Triple H would have played the same character. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Sean had his NWO run. It was was good. (laughs) He got that, whatever that was. You got to wear the shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he super kicked Booker T. <laughs> yo, that's still, yo, I don't know how Booker T stayed. Like the shit they did, like, oh man. Yeah. Uh, but see, but Piper, yeah, he got stabbed and all that, but Cheek legit got death threats. People were throwing shit to his house. They yep. wanted to kill this guy. Yep. Like Piper got reactions like that, but he was no one was Piper fully got trying stuff to end thrown Piper. at him. That's all that Piper, Piper got stuff thrown at him. Sergeant Slaughter, Iron Sheik. They had niggas had niggas had their address. Like, they I know where you live. I'm sending you this shit. I will fucking kill. Yeah. Like they were what? doing that for them, their family, like. Slaughter said it how many times he had to re- relocate his wife because they were finding their addresses every time. Like, 
That's like, heat. That's so fucking. That's the, there's there's different types of heat. Okay. And I get it. You feel like Piper was the greatest heel because he was able to get nuclear heat. He was able to get nuclear heat because he was just a hot head. Okay. Other wrestlers, yeah, they probably, he got on their nerves and shit like that. But when you're asking about heat, which gets more heat? I don't think there's more heat than a fucking death threat, not only to that individual who is playing a character. Okay. But also their family, wife, children, pets, the tree outside, the the bed, the 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 fucking mailbox that's outside their building, or, or excuse me, house. Sorry, I live in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn, I used to live in Brooklyn. Wow, <laughs> no more JMO for me. Yeah, yeah I'm still out there, folks. <laughs> This convo got Gigi thinking yep. she's still in Brooklyn right now. She's living in, in the Brooklyn. Because I'm getting ready to go to Brooklyn next week for Battle Club Pro. Do your motherfucking fucking thing. Yeah. Word. That's where we at. We're doing it. <laughs> bitch. bitch. <laughs> okay, where's she at? All right. Um, Word. There's, but overall, there's no greater heat than getting the death threats sent to yeah. your fucking home. Like, like, agree to disagree, Anthony. It, it is what it is. You don't like what we got to say. You ask for our opinion. This is what our but, opinion is. You don't agree with it? Go fuck yourself. Um, that's and the, beauty, that's the beauty about wrestling. That's the beauty about wrestling. It's all subjective. Facts. It's all how someone made you feel. Yep. Facts. You know? Like, I, I, I always say this. I don't like John Cena, but I'm not going to chastise someone for liking him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all about how you feel about it. It's all about your opinions and shit. That's it's the beauty about wrestling. All the time. Like, wait, what? What well, are you guys different. that you're spewing? Yeah, I'm, <laughs> up I, I gotta fight back, okay? I'm the victim Ray, do you here. Hear this? I have to fight back, okay? Y'all gang up on me. With I have to talk about the facts, and y'all gang up on me. You got me drinking water. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow, insane. Anyway, oh, it's gonna man. be fun next weekend. It's gonna be absolutely fun. I'm excited. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be. And, I, and I'm really cool. hoping that the air quality improves because this will be great to have it outdoors. Outdoors yes. is so much fun. Yeah. Well, I think we're getting better now. Like, I think we're at the hundred level that they were saying. Yeah, but we're getting better. We're getting there. So, as I know, yesterday around like five o'clock, it was at what three hundred or something. Three hundred something, yeah, which is hazardous. Like we should not yeah. have been outside. So according to to app to Siri, it's one forty four. Yeah. So we're getting there, which is this is the first time I feel like no. everyone is learning what oh. air quality numbers mean. Yeah, and you you know not for nothing, they don't want to tell you the truth. But in reality, it's not a forest fire in Canada. Brock Lesnar decided to barbecue this fucking week. (laughs) 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 He wanted to give a commercial for steak seasonings and all that. (laughs) He left the fucking hood open and now we're suffering. (laughs) And to make matters worse, you know he was using JR's barbecue sauce. (laughs) <laughs> Word. Bug out. Bug out. Oh man. But yeah, man, we can have a conversation like this all night, but it's it's twelve. You know, some of this us is gotta, had a part two because this yeah, is yeah. No, we, we, we start we, this Friday. we we're still here. Yeah, we de- <laughs> we're definitely gonna have to have you back, Ray, talk more about this shit. Because in all honesty, like this that's the purest conversation you can have with this shit. Because everyone has their opinions about wrestling and all that other shit, but you get to hear it. And you know, you we get to teach these people in the in the chat about the Iron Sheik. And RP the Iron Sheik. That was so fast, uh, RP. Yeah. That was that so was, sad uh, news. That like that yeah. hurt the soul a little bit. Like, ah, uh... Hey. Now who's gonna now who's gonna randomly text or uh, tweet fuck Hulk Hogan? Well, I, I think that the Twitter account said they're still gonna post. 
even okay. out of memory, they're still going to do it just because it's it, it, it's now just out of like they have to. Yeah. yeah. Hashtag never forget. Iron Sheik said, "Fuck Hulk Hogan." No. Jabroni. Fuck you, Jabroni. Oh man. Cheeky baby. But yo, on that note, it's your friendly neighborhood knucklehead signing out. Peace, everybody.